This morning marks my second encounter with something strange, so I decided to share it. Now, I'll just say this. I have no clue what this thing is, but both times I encounter these things, it's always while I'm driving. The creature itself is a massive coal-black wolf dog thing with red eye shine. First time I saw it, I was driving home from a late class. A big old hog raced across the road, causing me to slam on the brakes. I did avoid collision, and the pig quickly disappeared into a cornfield on the right side of the road. A second later, this massive canine bounds across the road in hot pursuit and disappears after it. I've lived my whole life here and have never seen anything like that. That was in southern Georgia. This morning, I'm driving through Winder to get to work, and I see what I first thought were railway reflectors since I was driving alongside some tracks. But as I got closer, I see this big black dog thing sitting by the right side of the road, staring in my direction. I wouldn't have gotten a good look at it if the car behind didn't have those bright lights. I slowed down since I don't know if it's going to cross the road or just run over the tracks it was sitting beside. It just sat there, staring at us with that weird red eye shine. The thing is not small either. Sitting down, it could stare through my car's windows. Am I just being paranoid about a big black dog? Most dogs at least react to a car heading towards them at night, and this thing didn't even bother to move. Around a year ago, in May 2020, my parents were going on their annual trip to Florida with my three brothers for a week. My mother asked me if I could go by their house, feed the family dogs, or stay and house sit. And being the daughter I am, I told my mother I would just stay at their house to save on gas. Throughout the week at night, I would bring the two dogs inside to feel safer since my parents live on a somewhat back road. Keep in mind, my parents' house is surrounded by trees, and there is a thick tree line separating their house from the two neighbors. Well, one night, while I was at the house alone, I called my best friend, Bailey, to come over and stay the night with me. We were going to do what two middle-aged 20-year-old females do when alone. Play video games, watch movies, TikToks, and drink. While Bailey and I were in the kitchen, around 3 or 4 a.m., making homemade funnel cakes, the dogs kept moving around, staring at the glass kitchen door that led off to the back porch. I asked Bailey to let them out there so they could chill. We would have enough leg room while we were cooking. While we were eating our funnel cakes, we came across a TikTok about making homemade temporary tattoos with a printed picture and perfume. Now keep in mind, my parents have about 3.82 acres of land, so there is the family house, my father's two-door garage workshop, and a large pole barn. Those two buildings are farther out near the tree line. So Bailey and I walk down to the workshop to go into my parents' work office. I punch in the code to the garage door, and we go inside, straight to the computer, and print out each other a picture of Kylo Ren, to try and make into temporary tattoos for each other. Before I go any further, a little side note. My parents have security cameras all over their property, and inside the office is a television above the desk, showing all of the live footage from the cameras. So, while I was cutting out the tattoo for Bailey, she says, What is that? I stop cutting and look up at the cameras, at first, I didn't see anything except for a small figure in front of the pole barn. It looked like it was sniffing at the garage door. I shrugged it off, told there was probably one of the many stray dogs that roamed around the area. Bailey nudged my arm quickly after I said that and pointed to the screen again, wanting to prove to her that it was just a stray dog. I stood up and looked closer to the screen. When I did... I saw the figure, but it didn't look like one of the small dogs. The creature was hunched over on all fours. Its arms were super thin and long, 
but pointing outwards from his chest. Kind of like how you'd imagine the girl from the exorcism to be when she crawled on all fours. It had no fur, and its skin looked tight on its body. When I tell you my inner white girl went to open the door to look at it, Bailey stopped me right then, and I grabbed the lock on the door. Looking back at the screen at the creature, it looked like it scratched at the door of the pole barn. I immediately said, What is that? And the creature turned its head straight, right at the camera, like it was the scene from the office. When its head turned, I couldn't make out clear facial features, but it looked like it had a human head, with two big glowing eyes. Bailey and I screamed, and it bolted. I mean, it bolted off screen. Clearly freaked out, Bailey and I hugged each other, as if that would protect us. Then, something smashed against the garage door. Not once, but twice. Like you know what it sounds like for somebody to smack a garage door from the outside with their hand. Yeah, just like that. I called my grandmother, told her that we thought we saw something, and to stay on the phone with us until we ran into the house. Once we got into the house, we brought the dogs in, locked every single door, and took shots of Crown Royal until we fell asleep. Now, we talked about this a few times, and I think it was a Wendigo, but Bailey's convinced it was a skinwalker. We live in Georgia. I didn't think they were near here. Could anybody help us? This just happened. On Tuesday, February 16th, I was lying in bed around midnight. At the time, only my dad was home, but he was sleeping. I had been in my room for the past few hours watching a speed run, and nothing was out of the ordinary. I didn't have my headphones on at the time, so I could hear everything, and at that point, all I could sense was the video on my laptop. Well, shortly after the clock rolled over to tomorrow, this putrid, horrid, rotten, sulfuric stench filled the room. I instantly thought there was a backup in my house. I went all over the house, but as far as I could tell, the smell only came from my room, specifically by the windows overlooking the backyard. It was getting late, so I doused the room in air freshener and turned a fan on and went back to sleep. That night, Wednesday, February 17th, I'm in bed again. I should mention that when I'm in my bed, my back faces the backyard windows. Again, right around midnight, the smell returns. This time, though, there is scratching at my window. I turn to look, and the scratching stops. The smell is still there, though. I got dressed, went outside to see if an animal had somehow gotten up to my window. It isn't a second-story window, but it is still about ten feet off the ground. There were no tracks, and the smell was even worse out there, and only existed right outside my window. I was more spooked than yesterday, but I decided it was one of my neighbor's garbage cans scraping against the chain-link fence. Then, we have last night, February 18th, Thursday. I'm in bed, and again, like clockwork, at midnight, the scratching and smells return. I'm dead tired from work, though, so this night, I don't even have the energy to look into what's causing it, so I fall asleep. While sleeping, I dream of my room. It wasn't sleep paralysis as if I experienced that before. The smell was worse than it had ever been. I was nearly throwing up. Then, standing on my windowsill, was a creature that I had never seen before. It was like a deer, except it walked on its two hind legs. Its front two were tucked in, like how a dog acts when it wants a treat. It hopped along my windowsill. Its skin was brown and patchy. The eyes, though, were what caught my attention the most. They were like headlights. There were no pupils or anything, just beams of light. I found myself getting lost in them, as if entranced by them. I don't know how long I did, 
but eventually I mumbled a single word. Skinwalker. And everything disappeared and I woke up. No idea as to what is going to happen. I have a dream catcher that a professor gave me years ago. I might hang that over my bed. So, two things. First, the scratching returned last night, but there was no smell. I fell asleep around 11 p.m. Maybe I just wasn't awake to smell it. The scratching was what woke me up. Second, I spoke with a professor who had given me the dream catcher. He teaches a dream quest class and has contact within the Navajo community. He is at best a bit of a loss what happened, but wondered if my dreams could have melded into reality. The subject of the dreams being COVID-19, as I contracted it back in November. So, I am a bit spooked. I was driving in the woods at night with my father. I live in the middle of the forest, somewhat. We went down a long, dark road in Ontario, Canada, and suddenly saw a semi-low, tailless, earless, bony, and elongated creature that reminded me of the shape of a starving human mixed with a hairless dog. It was so fast, it was a blur, and it had long fingers and skin-colored pale flesh. The same night, we saw strange footprints outside our house. It was not recognizable as deer, moose, etc. We both have spent plenty of time in the woods, and could pretty well recognize tracks, and we never seen anything like these. It looked like a cloven hoof, mixed with a humanoid-shaped print, and was fairly spread out and large. The foot pattern was like a V-shape, and followed across our yard in the snow, but suddenly stopped and left a gap of no prints, and continued again in the same line. We saw the same creature about a year ago, and we often hear deep growls that are so loud, they are as if a tree fell in the woods, and can be compared to a garbage disposal, layered with a high-pitched trumpet, with occasional clicking at our windows. My dad often sees glinting of gleaming eyes, and sudden movements of the same creature, followed by the same call. We do have native burial grounds and reserves in the city and area I live, and lots of sightings of odd, unexplainable things, including a place where thousands of natives were tortured and killed. This particular area, people report being pushed, hearing deep growls and screeches, scratching noises, weird glinting eyes, and getting disoriented by sounds, wind, movements, and even being pulled or separated with groups. People say the wind picks up, and disorients, and they black out, somewhat as if they've lost time, separated from friends and waking up with it being pitch black at night. Anyone know what this is? A crawler? A skinwalker? I'm quite frightened. Thanks for any information or possible theories. I live in a small town in northeastern Pennsylvania. It's surrounded by farms and endless forests. As a kid, I spent most of my time fishing for trout or building stick forts. Now, I have bonfires and deer hunt. So, as you can imagine, I'm outside most of the time. At this point, I know almost every paw print or call of the local animals, and I can identify it almost immediately. At the age of 13, I went over to hang one of my friend's houses for his birthday party, mid-June, alongside another two guys. We used to hang on a lot, but after this incident happened, we broke apart and all went our own ways. Anyway, we were crazy and imagining exploring abandoned places, finding paranormal spirits, as all the YouTubers did at the time. About three miles into the forest, there was this abandoned quarry. All of us were excited to explore it, so we got the birthday boy, his name is Aiden, to lie to his dad, 
and say we were going for a walk through the woods. Aiden's dad said yes, but to not wander off too far, and to pay attention to the trees, due to the sheer number of mountain lion sightings in the area very recently. Many say they don't live here in Pennsylvania, said to be a boogeyman of sorts, but I've seen one with my own eyes. I can tell you for a fact, they're here, along with wolves. We geared up, all grabbing our phone and knives. Well, at the time, I didn't have a knife, but I borrowed one from the bigger guys. His name was Clayton, and he's a little out of shape, to put it nicely. He usually brought around ten knives to our parties, like some kind of deranged serial killer. Sometimes he made me worry. He also gave one to our fourth guy, named Marcus. More ghetto than country, but it's okay. We got along at the time. As we packed our bags and got ready, we poked fun at each other. Me insulting Aiden's choice of footwear, wearing a pair of black and white vans, while the rest of us wore boots. Clayton poking fun at me for being the smallest guy in the group, and Marcus backing up Clayton's insults. As we headed out the door, excited for what we were going to find in the amazing abandoned quarry, imagining old mine shafts deep in the ground where coal was mined, or copper, the air seemed to change, and change as is heavier, like when a kid in class threatens to kill everybody in the room. Yeah, that kind of heavy. Almost a primitive fear. As I eerily looked around, curious about what installed this primitive fear into my system, the others talked about what we were going to find. I think we're going to find some coal. Maybe we can sell it to a local farmer, said Clayton, in an almost wishful sort of way. It's a quarry, not a mine shaft, yelled Aiden furious with such a ridiculous comment. Aiden had a tendency to get angry over silly mistakes. Even a misspoken word was enough to set him off. Same thing. Mineshaft quarry. All things worth exploring. Shut up before I knock you out. Aiden yelled in rage, almost about to throw a fist and knock his teeth. As Marcus calmed both of them down, I zoned out. As we were walking into the woods now, after going through along a field, the feeling of dread was getting stronger, and I almost wanted to run. I knew I was being watched. I always know. When someone stares at me in class, I usually look directly at them when I notice the feeling. I started to scan my surroundings. Maple trees, rocks, cliffs, bones... Birds. Beehives. Wait. Bones? I backtracked to where I seen bones, and looked a little closer. About sixty yards away, at the bottom of a cliff, was a dead deer. Fresh. Blood still on its bones. Flesh hanging from its skull. I imagined the thing that could have mutilated it so badly, and immediately thought of a thousand-pound black bear with rabies, going rabid and crazy. Honestly, I wish it was just a bear. Hey, I'm talking to you. Clayton pigged me with a rock, breaking my trance. What? What do you want, man? I asked him clearly annoyed. He asked me what I was looking at, irritated that I did not respond. I told him nothing, and let's get going. We still have another two and a half miles till we even reach the quarry. Nothing exciting happened as we climbed a large hill. I felt the air get heavier, and my primal fear clawing its way up my spine, as if about it to dig itself out. Once we reached the top of the hill, there was a level part, still filled with maple and birch trees and some decent-sized rocks. There was barbed wire fencing that led to a clearing, freshly mowed like a field. Aiden commented, saying that was his property, and his neighbor probably was trespassing again. As we got to the fence, I noticed something. 
something red hanging from a fence. A rag, or a piece of clothing, covered in dried blood. Underneath it was a rusted old knife, with a saw blade on one side and a sharp edge on the other. Me and Marcus argued for a minute about who got the knife, and I gave in, let him have it. We crawled under the fence and walked through the field. Right now, we were only about a half mile away from the quarry. I zoned out again as we walked. No one was talking about anything exciting anyway. I scanned my surroundings when my fear jumped, almost right out of me. I couldn't place it as I frantically looked around. Something bad, something evil was nearby. I could feel it. I could sense it in my spirit. I was at the back of the line, so nobody noticed my panic. I was scanning tree to tree, looking for something out of place. And when I got to a birch tree, roughly 25 yards away, I saw it. There was a large, lengthy gray hand wrapped around the tree. I could almost just about make out claws. Then I looked up a little bit above the hand, and I could just barely see the edge of a head. I looked at my friends, who got a little bit ahead of me, looked back at the tree, and the gray thing was gone. I ran to catch up with my friends, deciding to keep what I just saw quiet, so I'm not made fun of for the rest of the weekend. We finally started to see a clearing up ahead, with another barbed wire fence. We walked through a patch of thorn bushes, about as tall as me, it shredded our bare torsos as we took off our shirts and hung them from our shoulders. We crouched under the fence and finally made it to the quarry. And now, almost 50 years later, it was just some old cow pasture. We were a little bummed out as we're hoping for the ultimate mine shaft experience, but we knew logically what we would find. There was this cool little part, though, where the rock was cut out, leaving a ten-foot drop below to the cow pasture. We went over there, screwed around on the cliff. It was roughly 100 yards away from the tree line, so we were a little far from the woods. There was a pallet with some perfectly cut out square rocks in it. We looked through them, fascinated by how precise they were, but in the end, we just left them. Aiden got the idea to take some Instagram pictures, and we got in a pose to take photos for all of our pages. Aiden. We all spun around, towards the woods, hearing Aiden's dad. But it was off, almost mechanical sounding. Startled by how quiet it was, like a loud whisper, but the woods were 100 yards away. My fear crawled its way into me, and I wanted to go home, knowing something was very, very wrong. Guys, we need to go, I stated. Walking towards the tree line, the others followed. My fear grew stronger and stronger. I scanned the field, then the cliff, then the trees. As I was walking, we were at the tree line, scrambling under the fence. Snap. A branch cracked not far from us. We all look. Marcus still under the fence. And we saw it. Twenty yards away was this nine-foot human-like animal. Not even an animal. I mean, it stood on two legs like a human. But its gray skinny arms ended at its knees. And its claws were as big as its hands. It was partially crouched, perching its elbows on its knees staring at us with hot, hot red eyes, teeth sticking out of its mouth like a piranha, with large canines like a wolf. Its teeth were an ugly yellow and blackish color, like they were rotting. There even appeared to be some blood stains on the top row. We all stood terrified, frozen, staring at this abomination, this beast. Then, its eyes snapped onto mine. It made eye contact and twitched. In fear, I let out a gasp. 
and its eyes immediately perked up, as it heard this, as if in pleasure. Then, it slowly stood up, breaking my trance. I then jumped into flight mode. Run! I screamed, making a dash for home. The field, only fifty yards away now. The creature let out an almost metallic, human, bear-like roar. Its scream filled me with fear, and I could sense the hatred in its veins. This monster was primal fear. We ran like crazy as it chased after us, dodging left and right, changing direction, tripping it up so it couldn't catch us. We dove under the barbed wire fence and kept running. I looked back to see it hurdle the fence like it was nothing. Hot on our heels, running on all fours. I tripped over a branch, rolled, catching myself, and kept running. But this put me at the back of the line. I felt its hot breath on me, on my back as it ran. It let out another scream, and I jumped off the nearby cliff to my right. My friends doing the same. It was only a 15-foot drop onto some dead leaves and grass, so we landed somewhat nicely, except I rolled my ankle in the process, and Aiden landed on his knee on a rock. I looked back and seen I almost landed on the deer corpse from earlier. That certainly gave me a spark of renewed energy, or adrenaline. The tree line was only 300 yards away, and we ran and ran. We heard it screeching, scrambling down the hill at full speed. We vaulted over rocks and slid under fallen trees, and this thing was right on us the whole time. Teeth bared, roaring in anger. I knew the only goal that this abomination had was to mutilate us, like that deer. We ran and ran, then it roared again, this time sounding almost in defeat, like a lion failing to get a gazelle. We cleared the tree line and ran to the road. We turned back around to see where it was, and it stood in the tree line, just almost out of view, but still visible enough to see it. Evan. It croaked, in a voice so unnatural and evil, almost like demons in the movies, but more metallic and robotic. I didn't even mention this before, but my name is Evan. My friends always call each other mean things, so we rarely ever said our real names. Instead of primal fear, this time I felt rage. I puffed out my chest, slammed my hands on my pecs. Come at me, I screamed. A little unsettled by my primal outburst, this thing simply smiled, turned around, and disappeared. We all looked at each other, went back to the house. Aiden's dad didn't hear the scream, so we didn't have to explain anything. We went and hid in his room in silence. None of us really talked about it much except for me. If I was to ask them now about it, they would probably say it was just a bear and that we clearly overreacted. But I'm telling you, there was more to come to prove suspicions. At least me. Now, back a number of years ago, about 1998, I was deer hunting with a friend of mine here in central North Carolina, Chatham County to be exact. I was hunting with a good friend of mine on some property that his family owned. If you know anything about central and eastern North Carolina, it's the number of hog farms in the area and certain times of the year. Talk about stink. We were in a beautiful area, and we'd already scouted out where we were going to hunt. We got on our stands and got settled. Come 10 o'clock, we decided to meet up and see if we could not find a new spot for the late afternoon. We poured coffee and began looking at our maps, making a plan. All of a sudden, my buddy Bob looks at me and says, You hear that? I listened. I caught the faintest sound of what sounded like a man or a dog, screaming or howling. What is that? I'd asked. 
we both just stood there for a few minutes, sort of talking about what it sounded like. Just then, our third buddy came and rejoined us, saying, Hey, you guys hear that? Like I said, we were kind of taking a break, drinking coffee, smoking cigarettes, and talking in normal tones. While the call, scream, whatever it was unusual, we very quickly blew it off. That's a thing with youth, is simply you can blow off what you don't understand. I suppose some 20 minutes had gone by, and the three of us pretty much on our way to a second location, about a mile from where we are now. We're taking a slow pace, as it's deer season. We take four or five steps, then pause and look and listen, to see if we might have stirred something up. Any deer hunter is familiar with the cadence, and how it's important to not disturb other hunters' hunts. We came to an open section of woods. Beautiful spot. Large hardwood trees had formed a very nice canopy over us, and you could see a couple of hundred yards out, all around. Just then, a second scream like before. Powerful low frequency, but clear not something we recognized. Then, without warning, our third buddy, Jake, let out a scream in response. Scared the bejeebers out of us both, and we were trying to get him to stop. But he bellowed like mad in reply. Finally, Bob reached over and thumped him in the belly, which did stop him. He coughed. Then I said, You idiot. You have no idea what you're responding to. And if you hadn't noticed that thing was closer than it was the first time. Then he starts acting all hurt. And Bob, having thumped him an eye, told him to knock it off, or he was going to have to fight the two of us. Naturally, he started wanting to make light of the thing as a joke. Uh, so I told him, let's hope that's how it winds up going down. We didn't know exactly where. Whatever made that sound was, but it was darn sure we had a good idea where we were thanks to Jake. Okay, let's spread out a bit, three meters apart, and move this way toward our next hunting spot. Jake, I don't care if that thing starts playing at Freebird. You keep your mouth shut. We walked for a good 30 minutes, and Bob said this. We aren't far from where we want to be for the next hunt, but it's way early for setting up. Let's have a seat and eat some lunch. That sounded like a good idea. We had great visibility. It wasn't like something was going to sneak up on us. So we made a small fire, boiled some water, and made ramen noodles. A great staple even today. We'd gotten our stuff made up, ate, and talked of hunting, and anything else that sort of came to mind, and began putting out the fire, putting stuff away, when all of a sudden, that scream came back again, only it couldn't have been more than a few hundred yards away at most. Almost at the same time, I noticed the air seemed to stop moving, and dead silence fell. Not a sound from anything. Talk about eerie. It was then that the other guys looked all like the blood had dropped out of their faces. We could clearly hear the sound of something coming toward us, but we couldn't see where or what it was. Jake looked like he was about to cry. Bob didn't look much better. Just then, I'd realized we had weapons and we had survival gear. We could make a stand against whatever it was moving around us, no more than about 70 yards out. Just to our left was about three trees, which had fallen and created a bit of cover. I looked at the guys and said, On my say-so, grab all your stuff and get over to those trees. Get inside of them and take up back-to-back positions. Ready? Go. We took off got inside the trees and took our guns up, and were scanning about eagerly. Apparently, our sudden movements had alerted it, but we needed to be under some sort of cover, rather than out in the open like we were. Now, just as I started saying cover, 
Whatever area was in front of us, each of us felt a sudden rush of wind come in like a wave. I mean dead silence one minute. And then suddenly, a wave of wind came through. Not hard, but it just seemed completely out of place. And an odor came in with it, like nothing I have ever smelt. It was like heavily concentrated body odor. If you've ever been in the locker room, that was not quite up to standards of the cleanliness of today, then you know what I mean. Combine that with the smell of musk, and you get what I mean. It was nasty, very strong, strong enough that I looked over at both my guys, and we got tears in our eyes. You guys see anything? They say they didn't, but something stunk to the high heavens. Okay, I'm going to try something, I said. Don't freak out and don't panic. Remember, we have weapons, and if we stay together, we'll be fine. They nodded affirmatively. Hey, I shouted. We're over here, and we're armed. I heard nothing. Then I said, You might get one of us, but I guarantee the other two will get you. I try to use a strong command voice like the police often use to help control a situation. It was a bluff, but hey. We will leave and never return. I have some whiskey for you here as a sign of my word. I was thankful I had a gifting pouch with me now. I'd gotten to the point that I've never left it at home anymore, but almost left it at home today. Just wasn't expecting this sort of complication. Suddenly comes an angry scream, like nothing I have ever heard in my life like nothing I have ever heard before. I was carrying a rifle, and I located the source, as best I could, then told my guys, put your fingers in your ears. They did, and I determined as best I could where the scream had come from, took aim and fired. The report of the gun was deafening, and now I couldn't hear much of anything, but because I warned the guys, they still had their hearing. Mind you, I wasn't actually trying to hit the creature. Just let it know we were armed, and make it think twice about attacking. Then, being brave, I yelled out, If you want to fight, then let's do it. If you want to let it go, okay, then let's do that. But we are leaving, with or without your permission. I looked over at my guys. You guys are my ears for now. I can't hear a thing. And so Jake said, I can hear something on two feet over near where you fired. And so I asked him, is it moving away, coming closer, or what? Seems to be circling over this way, getting behind us, like it doesn't want us to go further in, Bob had told me. In about ten or so minutes, it had traversed around and behind us. It hadn't made any more sounds. Okay, guys, let's head back the way we came in. Just head back towards the truck. The guys looked at me funny. Look, guys, in about four hours, it's going to be getting dark. I do not want to be here when it's dark, with whatever that thing is out there, all interested in us. I was turned and talking to Jake, when all of a sudden, Bob opened fired with his slung gun. Bob! Bob! What are you shooting at? His face had lost all of its color, and he looked at me and said, It's a devil. He was rocking to reload his shotgun. A devil? He looked at me. I saw it step out. It looked like a wolf, but it was on two legs like a man. He looked like he might go catatonic on me. Keep it together. It's a dog man. They are dangerous, but they know what guns are, and that we have them. I was trying to be as cool as I could, so I did not freak the guys out. I have no idea if Dogman knew what guns are. That was the story at the moment in time. Then I wondered for a moment, what was going to keep me from freaking out? Okay, we're heading back to the truck. We're going to walk at as quick as pace as we can. No running, no freaking out. And no one fire off a shot unless one coming to attack us 
and let us know if you see it coming at us. They looked like they weren't sure. Hey, you guys can stay here if you want. And when dark comes, my guess is you'll have very little chance of surviving. My ears were still ringing from the guns, but the guys got up and began moving back toward the truck. I estimated that it wouldn't take us more than an hour and a half to get to the truck and get away. Once we were in the truck, there was going to be no stopping us. Bob, when we get to the truck, I want you to take up a position in the back and ride shotgun for us if something comes at us from the front. Then we'll bang on the rear window. He nodded. No one talked. We just kept moving forward. However, after about five minutes, I heard a call like a wolf that you hear on nature shows, long and drawn out. The sound of it made all of us pause, as it sounded like the thing had not moved. Then it called again and again. All of a sudden, we heard another call from further away, like an answer. I had no way of knowing if the creature was calling for help or calling to locate but I can only assume it was calling for reinforcements. I decided we need to do our best to be gone from there before the Wolfman Calvary arrived. We made our way progressively, making sure we have our retreat covered and moving back as quickly as possible. Finally, with the sun still up in the sky, we arrived at the truck. Without a word, Bob was in the back and Jake in the passenger's side. I only stopped long enough to drop my gear and put it in the back. I grabbed my pistol, two spare clips, and set them on the seat next to me. I looked over at Jake and told him, keep that shotgun loaded and ready to use if we have to. It just looked like he was scared to the point of being frozen. I reached over and poked him. We need you. You need to get in the game. He nodded. I later apologized to Jake over hot dogs for being hard on him. After all, this was a hunting trip where the tables got turned, and unless you've lived it, the level of fear can be debilitating. Not to mention, poor Jake had never heard of a dogman, and Bigfoot was just a joke. And suddenly, he was caught up in the middle of some stuff he'd never dealt with before in his life. I have to give him credit. He did good, all things considered. I cranked up the truck and began heading down a dirt road that had rained a day before, so there was no choking dust to deal with. Suddenly, Bob yelled to stop and beat on the back glass. I stopped and jumped out, asked what was up. All he could do was point. The look of shock that was on his face spoke volumes. There, in the distance... A good 100 feet, maybe 130, behind us was the devil. At least it sure looked like one. Ears turned up, snout clearly visible, and standing way too tall to be a man. And, while I have never actually seen a Bigfoot, I could see the proportion were all wrong for it to be one. I'm probably one of the few Bigfooters who would have seen a dogman, not a Bigfoot. It just glared at us like it was saying, don't come back. It turned to the side, and I could clearly see the profile. The head looked like a giant version of a German Shepherd, only the teeth were more like what you'd see on a baboon. It had what looked like a longer neck, and it tapered out to the shoulders. The upper body was heavily built, and appeared to be very muscular. The arms were long, but not overly long and it appeared to have hands like a human. Only the fingers seemed longer than they should have been. I speculate that it might have had claws that gave it that appearance, but I'm guessing this now. I did notice a short tail that seemed to hang down. I'm not sure why that detail seemed to stick out like it did, but I have learned that you see the darndest things when you're scared. I could recall seeing it that it was on two legs, but for the life of me, I can't say if its legs were like a human or a dog. I noticed the tail and can't tell you about the legs, but that's how it goes. I get back in, 
drove like mad until we'd come out of the woods and returned to the small town of Silk Hope, which is a small unincorporated community consisting of several churches, a volunteer fire department, and the local school and a little country store. I stopped, got out, and grabbed the guys and said, Okay, we didn't see anything, got it? And Jake just said, Are you kidding me? We need to call the TV stations. I looked at him and reminded him the reason we had to escape was due to him returning a call he didn't understand. How well you think they will play this on TV? What that was, was a dogman. Bigfoots, I might take a chance on. But, dogmen are dangerous, and might as well eat you as look at you, I said. Uh, what? Jake looked at me like he didn't understand. Dude, you go to anyone, cops, TV, anyone. You're on your own. Don't mention my name. Don't mention his name. And trust me, not a day after that goes out on the TV, you'll be wishing you kept your mouth shut. I then paused and said, I want a hot dog. You want a hot dog, Bob? Want a hot dog? Hot dogs are on me, guys. We went in and chowed down on about a dozen of them, and a couple of sodas each. I took them back to where we'd all met up, and they'd gotten their cars and headed home. On Monday, I came into work and was asking a buddy of mine about the hunting down in Chatham County. He said there were far too many feral hogs in that area. Now, and they'd pretty much driven the deer away from there. I just nodded, but as I recalled, I didn't see much of any sign of feral hogs. I had a feeling something else was at work on that issue. About four years ago, we moved to our dream home in the middle of farms and woods. We have eight acres which backs up against some protected land that is undeveloped. Mostly old, old farms and woods patched through them. We are between Oxford, Ohio, and from what I recently read, the fabled Germantown, Ohio. We keep to ourselves, my wife and son and our dog. I've only met our nearest neighbor, a late 20s and early 30s female, I never see her leave. Her dad stops by from time to time. She doesn't work. One night, a few years ago, I went outside around 12.30 a.m. to walk the dog. I had a few beers on a Saturday night, as did my neighbor, most likely. She was hooting and howling. So I joined in the fun and howled back. No biggie. But this play started happening more and more we started having weird stuff happen. Someone snapped our rooster's neck in the night and was coming on our property. So, I set up trail cams. It didn't catch much, but some deer and coyotes. A bit one day, I went to check the cameras and my SD card was missing and the camera open. So I gave up on that idea. I'm a bit of a prepper. Okay, I'm a big prepper so I turned the next few weekends into a full-on military operation to figure out who or what was coming onto our property. I got camoed up in a sniper ghillie suit and night vision, had my night vision scope rifle out. Nothing. So, one night, it's Saturday again, had a few beers but not close to drunk by any means, took the dog out when I heard the playful howl again, I thought it was my wife in the chicken coop, so I kept walking that direction. Nobody there. Huh. Weird. Must be the neighbor. So we got to the opening to the 300-yard spread of brush and woods between our houses, and I saw what looked to be a naked person with long hair, kind of like a lion's and less hair on the body, but still a light dusting of body hair. It ran off upright. I didn't see a snout or anything like that. No fangs or glowing eyes. But I did get a weird feeling, like it was a big dog, wanting me to chase it. An overwhelming vibe, so to speak. It ran through the tall brush, and I lost sight. 
The initial contact was about 120 yards out, and it ran the other 150 to 180 yards quick. My dog didn't even seem to care. Sort of like it was a dog it knew. Not exactly sure what it was, but it did not seem evil or dangerous. My daughter is 30, and back in October, or early November of 2020, she was about three blocks from home, driving down St. Anthony's Church Road at roughly 8, 8.30 p.m. This road is rural and very dark, except for the light on at a cemetery that you pass. That's when she noticed something darker than a shadow and huge go across that whole cemetery in a matter of seconds. This scared her enough to call me as soon as she got home, to tell me that how this was so upsetting to her, and she was now sick to her stomach. She was bothered by this, and experienced nightmares, and her and I were surprised at how this had shaken her up so much. She still at the time never heard of Dogman, so a couple of days later, she was walking down across the road to the mailbox, and a small creek with a wooded area on both sides across from where she walks, and she said that something or someone was watching her. When she walked, it walked. When she stopped, it stopped. And she experienced the same feeling in the stomach when she sees nothing or no one in the wooded area, since she's looking right through the wooded area because it's not thick as it was in the summer. She said that she could not hear anything, no nothing, and it freaked her out really badly, since nothing like that has ever happened to her before, except for riding past in the cemetery a few nights prior. Anyway, she hurried up and went back to her house and called and told me that she's being stalked by something that's got to be paranormal or invisible. That's when I told her that it could be a dogman. First off, this happened about three years ago. I was asked to put my encounter on this forum. I live in rural Tennessee, farmland, small town USA. So one night, early in the fall, my friend called me and wanted help with a newborn calf. I told him sure, jumped on my dirt bike and headed over there. When I got there, he had done deliver the calf but the calfskin mother was freaking out, mooing a weird kind of sound. My friend said he was going to lock her in the barn. Would I stay with a calf? So I did. He was gone not even three minutes, when I caught a nasty wet dog dead animal smell coming from my right. It was putrid. I thought a great dead deer was rotting nearby when I heard some branches breaking about 40 feet off to my right. I thought, great. Now a bobcat or some dog was going to be eating the rotting deer and make the smell even worse. But to my surprise, the smell moved. So I'm like, okay, smells don't move. So I shined my light in the area and caught a glimpse of something black. It was a blur moving so fast. I thought a bear but I've never seen a bear in these woods before. Just then, I heard something to my left, and I turned towards the sound, shining my light in front of me, about 20 feet, and what I can only describe as a werewolf-like thing, right out of a horror movie. It was standing on two legs, glaring at me. My mind was thinking that this is not real. It can't be. But there it was, seven foot tall easily, I'm six foot four, 280 pounds, and no small guy. But this thing made me look small. It was sniffing the air, and it showed a mouthful of teeth. Then I heard a branch break from my right. I turned, and there was another one, but smaller, about six feet tall, standing on two legs. So I positioned myself so I could see both creatures when the bigger one freaked me out even more. It took its arm and pointed with the huge clawed hands at me. 
I was truly terrified and remember the newborn calf still hiding in the grass. So, I reached down and pushed the newborn between my legs. The larger creature looked at me, shook its head, like to say, no, don't do that. Just then, I remembered that I had my father's World War II Colt 45 that he had passed down to me. I pointed that at the larger creature, thinking I'm going to get one shot and die but I was going out fighting. Just then, the larger creature made a weird clicking noise. It hurt my head, made my eyes water, and to my relief, the larger one went down on all fours and took off with the smaller one beside him. Like I said, it's been three, almost four years since my encounter. I never told anyone. I mean, who would believe you that you saw a real werewolf? I mean, you hear about Bigfoot, but werewolves anyway. You can believe me or not. I truly don't care. I know for a fact what I saw. I lived in an apartment complex when I was in high school and loved to hunt there. It was only six feet away from the parking lot. I almost lived in those woods. They had beautiful oak trees there with trails under them. So one day, I was hunting with my bow in a cow pasture, which had a barbed wire fence separating it from these woods. I had shot a rabbit there just a few days earlier with a razor blade arrow. I was walking down the fence line in the pasture, heading towards the corner where the fence went off to the left, towards the apartments. That's when I heard something large in the woods, coming straight towards me, crashing through the brush, actually. It sounded bipedal. It made me really curious because it was very thick woods, and hard to walk through. Besides, that no one ever went in this part of the woods except for me. These were like my woods. I called out, Who are you? What are you doing here? No answer. I repeated it. Still no answer. Yet they just kept coming closer. They got about 25 feet from me. It made me mad. So I almost jumped over the fence and ran over there to see who was only 25 feet away from me and did not want to answer. But then I remembered that I'd seen a man in his 40s with a long-barreled revolver on his hip across the creek coming from an area that had an abandoned barn, and that area always gave me the creeps. I just never went over there. So, I caught myself right before I jumped over the fence and said, No, something does not seem to be right here. By this time, I was at the corner of the fence line. I turned left and continued to follow the fence line towards my apartment. Then... I heard bipedal steps of this, what I thought was a person, because 40 years ago, we did not believe in Bigfoot or anything like that. I stopped walking, and it stopped. So I started walking again, and it also started walking alongside of me, about 25 feet. The woods were very thick in Louisiana, so you could not see through them. As I walked... I made sure that my razor blade arrow was well notched and never took my eyes off who was walking parallel from me. And then it came to a part of the woods that I could never get through because there was a different type of bush there, about five to six feet tall, and they were very, very sharp. Once I shot a bird there, tried everything I could to get in there to get my bird, and could not crawl under it or over it. I was not afraid to go through the brush. I had scratched my left eye twice and had to get the top layer of skin removed by an eye doctor from going through the brush in those woods. This thing started crashing through this brush. As I began to walk very fast, then I just saw for a split second a very, very tall black figure crashing through. It was solid black, maybe 8 to 10 feet tall. It had to have been huge to step over the top of these five to six foot tall bushes. I could see from about the chest up. 
It had its arms in the air and out in front of it, and its torso leaned forward, but did not see any clothing. I thought that was weird. And that's when it hit me, that it was not a man, but it was something else. I had no idea what it was. All I saw was like a black silhouette type figure. I took off running, and it did also, paralleling me all the way to the parking lot. When it reached a large tree right there, next to the parking lot, it sounded like it started smashing and snapping large tree limbs from the tree, like maybe four to six inches in diameter. I jumped the fence, running into my apartment, which was facing the woods, about 75 feet away. I never got the impression that it was a Bigfoot. I thought it was something paranormal, but did not have a clue to what it was, since we didn't have internet back then. For years, I thought about why this creature decided to do this to me. The only thing I could think of was that I shot that rabbit a few days earlier and immediately cut it open to clean it in the pasture. But as I began to skin it, I saw that it had worms under the skin, so I left it there. These woods were not very large, only about a quarter mile by a half a mile long, and in an urban setting. So I said to myself, no way it could be a Bigfoot, but what was it? So I did not shoot anything, I don't eat, and do not even try to break the smallest twig when I'm in the woods, no matter how thick they are or smash down any grass or make a trail. And when I pee, if it's possible, I dig a small hole and then cover it up. If I have somebody with me, I ask that they whisper, and feel like we should respect our woods and the animals of course, and all the paranormal creatures that live in it. What do you think it is that I saw? This happened directly to me. At the time of this story, I was a 12-year-old male who lived in California. For a summer trip, me and my family flew to Boise, Idaho for a week to stay with my cousins. We stayed at their house for two days. Then came the best part. It was the best part. Until what happened, that is. On the third day, we drove to a small city in the Rocky Mountains of central Idaho. They owned a cabin in Ketchum. The first day was fishing at nearby lakes, playing games and meeting a few of the neighbors on the small street. Everybody we met was nice. It was amazing. I thought nothing could go wrong. Before I say more, here's a layout of the area. The room where I slept was at the back of the house there was no fencing at the back of the backyard because it was on the bank of a freezing cold river. Directly on the other side of the river was a huge mountain covered by thick forest pine trees. A small path starts on the other side of the river, but there's no bridge. There is a one quarter of a mile down the road in front of our house. I went to bed that night, woke up at 2 a.m. needing to use the bathroom. I got up and did my thing and headed back to my room. As I got into bed, I felt so hot that I opened my window. Not 15 minutes after that I opened my window, I heard the most terrifying screech coming from the forest. It was raspy but high-pitched. I know for a fact it wasn't human. I've heard stories from horror narration YouTube channels that often describe creatures that make weird noises that sound sort of human, but aren't. I heard it once more, but this time closer. In the morning when I woke up, we explored around town. At 7 p.m., me, my sister, and my cousins got permission from our parents to go explore the forest. I was uneasy, considering I had heard creepy, human-like noises in the night, and it was nearing night. The oldest cousin, Alex, who was 16, took a loaded pistol, a lighter, and a backpack of snacks. I carried a hunting knife and a flashlight. The cousin my age, Julia, 
just took a flashlight. My sister, Brianna, and the other cousin, Karina, who were ten, took some extra batteries and a small bag of candy each. We made our way across the bridge at the end of the street and back to the path on the side of the river, across from the house. All of us began the hike to the top of the mountain. We made it to the top of Bald Mountain in an hour and a half. The view from 9,000 feet was incredible. At 8.55, Alex and I figured it was time to head down and order the group to the path. At this point, it was dark now. The sun had fully set. Julia and I turned on our flashlights and shined them ahead as we walked. Some halfway down the mountain, which was about 45 minutes into the walk, I got the dreadful feeling you get when you're being watched and followed. Seconds later, something that was hiding in the bushes a few yards into the tree line that bordered the path ran off on our right. I brushed it off as some type of small animal. About five minutes after the incident, what we heard made me tingle with fear and my heart dropped to my stomach. That same horrifying screech from last night echoed all through the forest, a mile or two away. I told everybody we needed to move faster, and we did. It went off again, but closer. Again, closer. Whatever that thing was, it was moving faster than us. We were full-on speed walking by then. That still wasn't fast enough, because soon, the screeching stopped and we heard loud steps 30 yards off to the right. I got that feeling of being watched. Alex took his gun, firing two shots in the general direction of the steps. The creature backed off, even though we thought he was gone. I still sensed we were being watched. As the river came into sight, it caught me and everyone else by surprise. I heard the path gravel crunching behind us, I looked back, and in the darkness, saw the outline of something that resembled a human on the path behind us, with about 200 yards of distance between us. I told Alex and his face went pale when he looked. We told the rest of the group quietly, and on three, we all broke out into a run towards the river. Whatever that thing was, it was extremely fast. When we reached the river, there wasn't time to get to the bridge a quarter of a mile farther along the river because this thing was catching up fast. We jumped in and swam across the ice-cold water. It got to the river just as we made it up the bank and into the backyard. Julia and I shined our flashlights and finally got a good look at what our pursuer looked like. It was a massive, hairy creature standing about seven feet tall huge razor-sharp claws like a bear, eyes that glowed red that illuminated when a flashlight shined on them. Alex shot at it, and it darted off with one final long screech. We all looked at each other in pure terror, shock, and surprise. Alex explained everything to our parents. They didn't know what to make of it, and had never heard anything like it. I am thankful nothing happened to us, and that I noticed the creature behind us. If I had not, one of the others might not have noticed until it was too late. The next time I stay at that cabin, I'm not going alone in those woods at night. Never again. Not after that. This thing was seen by me and my friends on two separate occasions. I will explain the first encounter it is a decently long one, so bear with me. Me and my older brother and two friends decided that we were brave and ventured off into my pasture. Now, I'm not in a rural area where my neighbors are super far away. I'm only about 20 minutes from town. Well, the oldest in the group was 12. So being dumb, we walked out to the field and keep in mind it was freshly diced and plowed, so there were no weeds. Armed with a pocket knife 
and a big knife, and a CO2 airsoft gun. We walked out to my back gate, and into the field. We saw nothing, but the buildings maybe a mile in front of us. We also have coyotes out there. Well, we made it to the back of the field, and a horrible smell came out of the ditch, so we ran back. When we turned back to the field, we saw two figures. I know for sure that they were not there 25 minutes ago. Stupidly, we shot the gun at them, and they stood up on two legs. We panicked and ran inside and watched a movie. The second time is very quick. I was playing basketball late at night, and I saw this thing jump from tree to tree. I was older. It was two years from the last sighting, and I was strangely not scared. I just went into the house and went to bed. That is my story of the strange creature I saw those nights. If you know what it could have been, please tell me. It all started when summer came, and me and my three friends, Lola, Katie, and Jennifer, were all planning to go camping. We were all excited and scared at the same time, because we were going camping alone. Lola had asked her father if he could drop us off. He agreed to take us. When the next day came, we started heading up. Lola's dad set up the camper that we were using. There was some spare blankets inside. Lola's dad finally got us in his truck and turned around. He stopped, rolled down his window, and told us no boys. There were three rooms in the trailer. One master bedroom, and two rooms with each bunk. Each room had a TV in it, so nobody cared what room they got. Everyone knew that Jennifer did not like small rooms, so we let her have the big one. I was in a room with Lola, and Katie was in a room by herself. I started unpacking when we heard a loud boom outside. I asked Lola if she heard that. She asked me what, and she said she heard the boom. We both looked at each other, startled, then continued unpacking. But something seemed off. It was the fact that Lola was so chill about it. I was done unpacking, so I walked outside and started a fire. Jennifer walked out, asked if I saw it. I asked, saw what? And then she starts freaking me out. She was staring behind me, panicking, her eyes darting back and forth, and then calming. I felt as if something was watching me, so I turned around. I saw an orb in the corner of my eye, reddish black, but by the time I turned to look, it was gone. I was so freaked out. I told Katie she could cook instead. We had her family's secret recipe of shepherd's pie and a bunch of vanilla cupcakes. There were about a dozen cupcakes left in the open box, so we just left it on the table and went to bed. I could hear the TV coming from Katie's room, so I punched the wall and told her to be quiet. Right after I said it, everything went quiet, except for a small scream in the distance. It did not sound human. It gave me chills that ran down my spine. I dozed off, but woke in the middle of the night from hearing someone in the kitchen. I woke up Lola, then we walked out into the small hallway that led into the kitchen. I saw Jennifer sitting on the table, staring straight ahead. Something touched me. I jumped and realized it was just Katie seeing what was making those weird sounds. Jennifer was really creeping me out. She never stared into space this often. But then I noticed something in the corner of my eye. It was a shadowy figure. It was staring at Jennifer and slowly turned to face me and Katie. I froze. Katie froze. Jennifer then looked at us, as if being mind-controlled. Then the figure ran out the window, and Jennifer then dropped her head onto the table. We tried to wake her up, 
but ended up falling asleep. This experience still scares me, and is the only one of the creepiest things I have ever seen. Me and the others are still very close friends. We actually live together now, but we all remember that night, and whatever it was we saw, it turns out Jennifer remembers seeing it in the daytime, but was out cold when the rest of us saw it. It freaks us out even more, now knowing that our friend wasn't even awake and staring into space, eyes wide open. Hey, what looks beneath? It's Dean, here again, writing you back with some more interesting stories. So, I got in contact with a friend, who also happens to be close relatives and friends to some Appalachian and Seminole in the Florida area. If you don't know, there are quite a few native tribes to the entire Florida Panhandle area. The Appalachian and Seminole are just a couple of them. But what I find interesting is their stories. This friend, when I started talking to him about the alligator man, or the half-man, half-dinosaur that I saw, that I wrote to you about, he started telling me some stories from his friends that they shared with him, all while they encountered in the old time in the swamps and Everglades. Things like old men shape-shifting into alligators, things of that nature, and they believe that the alligator man, or at least some of the tribes, believe he is a cursed witch, while other believe he is a shape-shifter, capable of taking on form of half-creature, half-man, thus appearing like a dinosaur man, or like a half-man, half-alligator. I guess there are other stories about an actual clan, modern day, mind you, of evil shapeshifters living in the Everglades that transform into horrific-looking creatures, like the alligator man, for example, or lizard-like creatures, or worse, that are still active to this day, they take this form because taking that physical form allows them greater strength than in their human form, and they're able to have greater power, can conceal themselves, and invoke fear and terror on the innocent. And while I firmly believe the tribes of this region have dealt with this kind of thing firsthand, it's all just speculation, since we don't have any definitive proof. But these are kind of the best guesses so I wouldn't be too surprised if none of this information was that far off from the actual truth. Anyway, just thought this little piece of information might prove useful to you in your search for the truth. For my 25th birthday party, me and a friend of mine were driving up to Vegas. I had never been to Vegas in my life and figured since I missed my 21, 25 will be the time to fully celebrate. We were taking the 15 up into Las Vegas. We were maybe only a few miles outside of town. It was still pretty deserty. We saw what I think was a skinwalker. Not by the road, but off in the distance a little. My friend saw it first and mentioned it to me. I looked to see what he was talking about. And off in the distance was this really pale, thin figure, looked to be in tattered black clothing, almost kind of like a robe, like a robe you would see from the Middle East, full headgown too, and these weird antlers protruding from its head. It was very tall and very slender, maybe nine feet tall if I had to guess. It was out there, so it's just a guesstimate, but it looked very out of place. I didn't see any details but it was just standing there. It very well have may have not have been a skinwalker, but my friend and I were thoroughly creeped out and could just not understand while in this heat and the desert sun and day, while anybody in their right mind would be out there in the middle of nowhere wearing dirty, tattered black clothing, like that, covering their entire body and a headdress, just standing there, being perfectly still, it was very creepy and very strange. I'm not really sure how to categorize my experience with the paranormal or unknown. 
but this was back in the late 80s, and I was on a little road trip across country. This particular event, I was staying in a cheap motel, just outside of Fort Collins in Colorado. I remember being woken up in the middle of the night from my motel room by a very familiar voice calling my name from outside my motel room, calling me to come here. Here's the weird thing. The voice was my grandfather, who'd been dead for well over 20 years at this point. It was very creepy, and I considered it either me dreaming or just a coincidence. But the more it spoke, the angrier its tone became, because I wasn't coming to the door and coming outside. And even weirder, it knew my name, or the person knew my name, whatever it was. I'm going to say thing, because it gave me complete sinister evil vibes, like I knew it had to be more than a person. There was just something not right about all of it. I stayed in bed, tried to sleep the best I could, and this went on for maybe another 10 or 15 minutes before ceasing completely. I checked out of there maybe 8 a.m., and I was gone. I didn't stick around to investigate or see who or what it came from. That was it for me. Not me, but my grandfather. He has seen some very disturbing things out in Red Lake Reservation, which is in Black Duck, Minnesota. I am full-blooded native, but because of where and how I grew up, I'm pretty detached from my culture and heritage. Only knowing a little bit, but I have a very deep interest in the paranormal, and even cryptids. I'm not exactly sure what our tribe's definition of a skinwalker is, like the Navajo down in the Arizona range, but this is something else that's very similar. Like it, but its own thing. My grandfather would describe it as a tall white figure with large elk-like horns protruding from its shoulders, back, as well as head. He tells me, or has told me, he would always see it, wandering around the lower Red Lake. The Red Lake Reservation is actually one large lake. The southern half is called the Lower Red Lake, with a very small channel leading to the upper larger body, known as the Upper Red Lake. He's been all around there, fishing, living, and just doing things that grandfathers do in his time. He's seen this creature multiple times, and has given off very bad energy. He told me that he believes that it comes from beneath the earth. I'm not sure if he means like from hell or what, but says this thing has targeted him and has tried and attempted to come after him. Calling out to him multiple times, with voices of his dead relatives, and even his dead wife, and even his own voice and children says sometimes that he'll see it on the highway nearby, or even around his trailer. And personally, I think the most haunting was when he was trying to get into his truck one early morning, and this thing comes out of nowhere, behind the trees, and nearly approaches him, speaking to him telepathically, explaining to my grandfather he does not belong here, and if he continues to stay, this thing is going to rip out his heart said this creature was evil, had a face and eyes that were black, and had long, jagged elk-like horns. I don't know if that fits the description of a skinwalker, or what, or if maybe our tribe has its own skinwalker. I don't know, but it's terrifying to think about. I've asked my grandfather, too, if he believes it was a shapeshifter, someone who has transformed, and while my grandfather isn't sure... He knows one thing. This being is of dark energy. When I was nine years old, my older brother, who was 15, and my mom and dad, we all went camping for a week in Prince Albert National Park, which is up in Canada. The adventure was a blast. We had a lot of fun on the lake and just the area around. We did all sorts of stuff. But my story is actually my brother's tale. One night, when he got out of the tent, 
he tells me that he believes he saw a monster, which also appeared to take different forms and shape, according to him. He said he was out peeing by a tree, and behind the tree, not the one he was urinating on, but another one close by, a large wolf came behind it, and when he said he stared at it, he was frightened by its face. He said that it had a very human-looking face. The way he described it was half wolf and half man, and very striking evil yellow eyes. Said that it stared him down, as if my brother, peeing on this tree, had disturbed this wolf-man thing. Then, it looked away from him, went behind some brush, and after about 20 seconds, came back out as a very large brown bear with also a distorted face. This freaked my brother out, and so he ran back to the tent, freaking out to me and both my mom and dad. They tried to calm him down and just explain that it was probably just a trick of the dark and that he was just seeing the wildlife. I talked to him about it the following day. He told me about it in more detail, basically what I just told you. He said the face just looked far too wrong, far too human to be an actual animal. He's a firm believer in shapeshifters and all of that. I didn't even know what any of that was at nine years old. But the older I've gotten, I've come to be educated on the subject, and I do believe his story. He was pretty genuinely frightened. I mean, I see no incentive for him to make that up, or to fake it. He had nothing to gain, and he was never a prankster, and never one to pull any stunts like that, or make up stories or lie. So, I have no reason not to trust him. I am aware, though, that shapeshifters and people taking shape of animals is generally a Native American thing. I know nothing of the tribes in that area, or the things they practice, so I couldn't tell you any of that. But I can tell you that it does sound like it might be a case of a shapeshifter to me and it must have just been wandering through the woods, maybe looking for somebody or something. My brother just so happened to leave his tent at night and go relieve himself. Maybe this thing or person was not too far away, heard him and saw him, and apparently was startled, then went behind the nearby brush to take a different form and shape, which my brother clearly saw. When I asked him about this, he just said there was no way that a wolf that looked very uncannily like a man could go behind some brush and within only a matter of 30 seconds disappear and a large brown bear walks out, having the same distorted human-like face. It really makes you question the secrets of the wild and what really goes on in the forests when nobody's around. Maybe there's a lot more to guardians of the forest than we think. I like to think of it that many Native Americans are endowed with specific magic and they're able to shapeshift and guard parts of the woods. From what, I don't know. And from who, I don't know. Why? Well, maybe they think of themselves as guardians. That's if my theory on shapeshifting is even correct. For all I know, he could have saw a demon. I'm not too sure. But the shapeshifter thing sounds much more plausible if you believe in cryptozoology and all of that. So, I wanted to ask you, do you believe my brother saw a shapeshifter that night? And what are the tribes around that area? What do they practice? Do they have any sort of skinwalker shapeshifter thing in their tribe? Is there anybody that could be considered a black witch and practice dark magic to shapeshift? Or, do they maybe have any guardian figures that would shapeshift and protect the forest. I'm very curious. Please, let me know what you find. Thanks. In 2011, me and my best friend saw what we believed to be a living, breathing dinosaur. Some sort of predatory raptor of some kind. We were visiting the Grand Canyon National State Park, and if you didn't know, the park is very expansive. Lots of time to travel, lots of places to explore and to go to. 
my friend and I spent many days going all over, exploring as much as we could. At one point, it was late afternoon, sometime between 3 and 5 p.m. The sun in the sky was beginning to set in the evening, but it wasn't quite evening yet, which is why I say late afternoon. We were sitting in this kind of canyon-like area. As we were sitting, collecting our thoughts, talking, and discussing the area we wanted to explore next while upping on some water. My friend pointed out something watching us from the rocks above. I looked, following where his finger was pointing, and sure enough, something stuck out that looked like a large reptile from between the rocks. At first, we thought it was just a misidentification of maybe the environment or surrounding. Maybe from the distance, it was just a large rock that appeared to be a reptile. We both began making comments, saying how weird and out of place it looked, until it moved, and moved very much. Actually, its entire body began to move, and then it moved out in the open, between the rocks. My friend and I got a pretty good look at it. The coloration is very similar to that of an alligator or crocodile, a deep green, except it was closer to black than it was a green, so much darker, very heavy set, very muscly, and almost identical to that of a raptor. And I know this might sound cheesy, but the only dinosaur reference I could think that would give you an idea is Jurassic Park. It didn't exactly look like a raptor from that movie or that series, but you kind of get the idea. It looked exactly like some sort of predatory dinosaur, some carnivorous lizard that would have eaten us. This thing wasn't small by any means. It stood on two legs, hunched over, had its arms tucked into its body, and had a very large head. This wasn't a T-Rex, obviously, but it was larger than my friend and I, who were both 6'1 and 6 foot respectively. This thing stared at us and was maybe 70 feet away, had very piercing yellow eyes and dark skin like I said. We never really saw much of its teeth, but there were sharp teeth protruding from each jaw, kind of like a way a crocodile does. It just stared at us, kind of showing somewhat interest, and then maybe after 20 to 30 seconds, its attention was immediately shot over to its left, clearly disturbed by something, looked back at us, and then ran off between the rocks in the opposite direction. My friend and I used that moment as the perfect chance to flee, freaking out, not exactly sure what we had just seen. After we spent the rest of the day talking about it and going back to get out of there, we came to the conclusion that we believe we saw a living, breathing dinosaur, something we thought was extinct, but we have no way to actually come to any other conclusion than that. Nothing else fits the description we saw. If it was a lizard, it was sure the biggest lizard, most dinosaur-like looking lizard we had ever seen in our lives. And I'm pretty sure from pop culture and movies that there's only a few things that can remotely look like a dinosaur. And if it looks like a dinosaur, it probably is. So in the past year or so, I've been listening to your show, and I believe you have a couple episodes here and there that talk about dinosaur sightings, but it doesn't sound like a lot. So, I've been meaning to do this for a while, but I thought I would ask your opinion. Is it possible that my best friend and I actually saw a real living dinosaur? Possibly. There might be a small population of raptors living out here in the wilderness of Arizona. I mean, there's plenty of coverage and caves to hide in, but isn't it weird that nobody has really seen one, or at least reported of it? I don't know. I guess it's possible that a small sect of them could still be alive. I just don't know. Hello. I have family that live and work down in central Costa Rica. If you've never been there, it's beautiful. If you like hot, humid jungles, there's a lot to see. And it's very similar to ever being to Hawaii, if you've ever been there either. But other than that, I have nothing but positive things to say about my experience, which leads me to my story. 
I believe that my wife and I saw a living, breathing pterosaur flying in the sky, heading north. We were exploring around in the jungles, not too far off from where my family lives, admiring all the beauty, sights, and sounds. We weren't in the thicket of the jungle, like exploring with machetes and whatnot. We were close by to civilization, just traversing a little bit, exploring what we could, and before us was an open area that led to ocean, where my wife immediately spotted something large flying in the sky and wondered if there are such things as large tropical birds that traverse the country. Upon showing me, I realized even from the distance, the shape was wrong, and it was far too large to be a bird. I mean, if it was a bird, it was clearly the largest bird I have ever seen in my life. Basically, Quetzalcoatl, if you will. When we looked at it, which we had plenty of time because it was taking its sweet time flying across the sky, heading north, it looked exactly like you'd see a pterosaur. Just look up any illustration of a pterosaur. That's pretty much it. Long webbed wings and a small tail right behind it that kind of had a spade shape at the end. A very long duckbill head with even a crest at the top. It was easily hundreds of feet away, but high enough in the sky that gave away everything about its silhouette and shape. We were amazed by this and talked to several of the locals afterwards. Many of them have also seen the same thing, and they too believe there are pterosaurs that still exist and inhabit the jungles of Costa Rica and other areas of Central America. Talk about incredible. You seem to be the expert on all things cryptids, or at least I hope. For the sake of my sanity, maybe you can provide some answers with what I saw that day. So, I'll give you some backstory. My name is Dean, and I had a pretty rough upbringing on eastern Texas. In fact, even all the way up to my mid-twenties was partying, drugs, alcohol, sex, debauchery, three-day benders, if not more, absolutely out of control. I grew up in a very bad environment, so it just very well translated into my adulthood. Well, fortunately, I had some close relatives who do care about my well-being and just came into a situation where they could take me in, care for me, and kind of act as my rehab. So, I decided to take them up on the offer, having finally hit rock bottom and wanted to clean myself up. This relative of mine lived around 45 minutes north of Orlando, Florida. So I took a Greyhound bus there and spent almost a year there cleaning myself up, changing my life around. And now, I'm a much better person for it. Even having a dark past, it teaches you a lot of things about yourself. But enough about my background. As I was staying with this relative, they were kind enough to hook me up with a job from a friend of theirs who owned a very small company. I won't give the name or the area, but it was north of where I was living, so I made beautiful morning and afternoon commutes back and forth. One day, I saw something in the wilderness of Florida that will forever make me question what really exists out there. I was driving up there in the morning, heading north, on the Emeralda Island Road, which this entire stretch of road is all marsh conservation area. It's pretty wild and there's a lot of lakes and water around, like Lake Hustis and Lake Griffin, for example. As I'm driving, I noticed a black figure off to the side of my vehicle, running in the brush, keeping low. There are many sections of this marsh land that have no trees, so that means something big was purposely keeping low and keeping stealthy, but enough that I could still see a large shape keeping parallel with my vehicle and even speed. I began to get kind of concerned. What could it have been? I kept looking over out of curiosity, and the more I looked, the more concerned I grew, because this thing seemed to be intelligent, ducking behind brush, hiding, but also keeping up with my vehicle, almost crawling at an insane speed. I was thinking it might be a giant lizard or alligator, or maybe a huge snake. I wasn't sure. Once I drove into certain sections of the road, 
that were covered in heavy foliage. I began to truly see the shape and silhouette of what it was. It appeared to be some sort of dinosaur-looking thing, or dinosaur-man thing. I didn't get the best look in the world at this thing, but I did see the silhouette and kind of shape of it. It did look like it was upright, but it also kind of looked like a large lizard-looking thing. Maybe dinosaur isn't the right word, but it kind of had a large dinosaur head on a human-like body. It was very large and very bulky. Think like a 9 or 10 foot tall linebacker, just massive broad shoulders and appearing to have a long alligator-like tail. So maybe I saw an alligator man or something. I mean, I've heard stories, but I never believed it. There's also stories of a skunk ape down here, which is, I guess, Bigfoot. But I've never seen that either, so I don't know how much I believe. But I can't refute what I saw this day. Even though I didn't get the best look at it, because I was driving, and it was keeping parallel with my vehicle. But something large and manlike, and alligator looking like, definitely was following me in my car. For quite a distance, actually. I'm no Everglades or swamp biologist, but I'm trying to think, what is that size? What is shaped like a big gorilla, or a man, but yet has the head of a large dinosaur or alligator, and a long tail trailing behind it? that is also incredibly fast, enough to keep up with a vehicle, and also duck and keep stealth cover behind brush. Very limited brush, might I add. Nothing comes to mind that I know of, so I either A. hallucinated it all, or B. encountered a cryptid of some kind, some kind that is natural to the Florida swamp area. Did I encounter an alligator man, or was this a half-man, half-dinosaur? Even entertaining the idea just seems absolutely silly and ridiculous, but I know for a fact I did see something, and it was far too real to just hallucinate. I've been off drugs for a long time, and have never seen anything or any distortion of shapes or phantoms or silhouettes, even when I was on drugs. So for this just to happen out of the blue, and make the brush and everything else around it move, and to see a silhouette like this, there's just no way I was hallucinating. And pair that with the stories of people that I've heard talk about the alligator man in Florida. I don't know. Maybe there really is something around here. I was hoping that by sharing my experience with you, and hopefully you could share it with your audience, that maybe people would give me feedback and provide me with the truth that there are more sightings and encounters of the same cryptid out there that's either a human dinosaur creature or truly an alligator man that does roam the swamps. Thank you. So, this all happened way back in the late 1990s, when I was a college sophomore. Me and the girl I was dating at the time had been going steady for about eight months, and since she was my real first girlfriend, my mom was pretty keen to meet her, and what better time than the holidays to introduce her to the folks? During the week before Christmas, my mom's family traditionally held quite a large gathering up at my uncle's place over in Sandy, Oregon, my home state. Pretty much all of my extended family headed out there year after year from all over the Portland area. And since they'd gotten word that I was bringing my girlfriend, the hype to meet her was huge. I won't lie. I was kind of nervous that they'd embarrass me in front of her, but that anxiety was totally misplaced. She got on really well with all of them, and despite some playful humiliation when a cousin of mine told her the story of how I literally peed my pants at the Haunted Mansion ride back when I was a kid, they were a credit to me. When it came to driving her back home, she seemed to be more into me than ever. We'd agreed to drive back down to Eugene at like 7 p.m., so I wouldn't be too tired driving back. But since we had such a good time, we stayed way later than we had ever planned to and didn't get on the road until like 10.30 that evening. In the hopes of making the journey a little faster, I ended up taking the Oregon 211 instead of just sticking to the I-5 South for the whole drive. Annoyingly, this did not actually make the journey any faster, 
But point being, the two and one was pretty much surrounded by farms, or these huge swaths of dense pine forest. As you can imagine, big stretches of it aren't lit very well at all. And for some parts of the drive, we were moving through complete darkness, saved only by our car's headlights. But honestly, I wasn't all that worried about it. I was pretty good at reading a map, and once I was back on the I-5, a road I know pretty well, I figured everything would be all good. So we're just cruising along, in high spirits, talking about how goofy some of my family were. But generally, my girlfriend was singing their praises, telling how she could not wait to meet them again. It's right around then that we hit a section of highway that descends down this big old hill, leading up to the bridge crossing over Deep Creek. There, the highway is sandwiched by some very dense forest, the densest you are likely to ever see. And there is absolutely nothing lighting up the highway. So the only thing we could see from the front seats of the car is like maybe 20 to 30 feet that our headlights are illuminating and pretty much nothing else. But like I said, we're in high spirits, completely unprepared for what was about to happen. Right as the highway starts to level off, something darts across the front of us so fast and so suddenly that I barely missed smashing into it. I brake so hard that I almost gave the pair of us a whiplash. Then, when we're both stopped, both me and my girlfriend are in a complete frenzy of, oh my, did, did you see that? What was that? There are plenty of deer in that area of Oregon. Plenty of coyotes, too. But the thing that ran out in front of us was way too big to be a coyote. And something about the way it moved gave me this gut feeling that it was not a deer either. The shape was just too slender, almost like whatever was out there had moved on two legs, not four. Now, next thing, and I know how completely dumb this sounds in retrospect, but my curiosity just got the better of me. I decided that I wanted to investigate. So, again, this was all so incredibly dumb I turned the car like 90 degrees on the highway so I could point our headlights into the woods. Yes, this could have caused a horrible accident if another car had come along at the same time I was doing this. But was I thinking straight at the time? Of course not. You see, as a kid growing up in the Pacific Northwest, I'd heard a lot of stories about Bigfoot and Sasquatch. I'd be lying if I said they didn't capture my imagination. Now, I'm not saying that I thought I'd caught a glimpse of a Gigantopithecus or anything. I know the stories are mostly exact that. Just stories. But part of me just wanted to be sure. So, like I said, I turned my car 90 degrees, turned on my high beams, and stepped out of the driver's side onto the highway. I stare up into the trees for a minute or two, but I don't see anything. Nothing is moving. The whole scene was as quiet as the grave. But as I'm looking, I just get this feeling in the pit of my stomach and start to feel as if I'd made a huge error of judgment. It was one of the most intensely terrifying feelings that I've ever felt in my life. A feeling like I was being watched by something predatory. I know it's a huge cliche, and the whole I felt like I was being watched thing is such a tired old trope, but I really don't know any other way to phrase it. My heart was pounding, the hairs on the back of my neck are now standing on end, and my guts turned to ice. Without turning my back on the woods, where I expected the danger to come from, I started edging back towards the car. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, I practically jump out of my skin when I hear the car's horn let off one long, excruciatingly loud extended blast. I mean, it scared me so bad that I almost straight up peed my pants, haunted mansion style, like when I was a kid. My first thought was that my girlfriend 
has ended up leaning on the horn as she climbed over into the driver's seat for some reason, maybe to get my attention. She'd done that once or twice before. But as I turned back around, she's still on the passenger's side, but that she's actually leaning over to push on the horn in what was evidently a frenzied attempt to get my attention. I run back to the car and ask her if she's okay. She doesn't say a single word to me. She points off to a spot, about 50 feet away from where we were parked in. I spin my head around to see what she's pointing at. That's when I see it. What was, without a shadow of a doubt, the thing that run in front of our car just a few minutes prior, lit up by the residual light of our high beams, what I saw was really, obviously a man, but he was covered in animal fur, what looked like a mishmash of deer skins, bear skins, and elk skins, and on his head, secured in a way I'm not even sure of were these antlers. At the time, because of how close it was to the holidays, I remember the words reindeer man just kind of flashing through my head, maybe in the naive hope that the dude was dressed that way out of some misdirected festive spirit, but he certainly didn't seem in any kind of festive spirit, not in the least bit. Like, I couldn't see his eyes because the weird kind of head covering he had on, but I could see his mouth, and at first, he kind of looked like he was giving us a smile. Only as I looked, I could see it wasn't a smile at all. This guy was just baring his teeth at us, like the way chimps do, as some kind of warning. After that, he turned and walked off into the forest. Obviously, right after that, me and my girlfriend just got out of there, got back on the road towards the I-5, it took us both a while to calm our nerves, but my girlfriend was particularly shaken up. That's because she'd seen something that I had not. And as we drove on, she explained exactly what that was. While I'd been staring off into the woods, looking for Sasquatch or whatever, she noticed him out of her peripheral vision, but was basically frozen in fear for a moment or two as she watched him slowly walk towards me or rather, walking isn't the right word. From how she described it, this guy was stalking, the way a hunter might stalk a deer. The way she put it, she had to summon pretty much all of her courage to be able to lean over and honk the horn the way she did. Then, when Reindeer Man had heard the honking, he backed off a little, and before I saw him, like I said, he just kind of froze in place before disappearing. I did a fair amount of online research when I got home to try and find out if anybody else had any run-ins with this guy, but there was absolutely nothing online about him. There are plenty of crazy survivalist types up here in the Pacific Northwest. I'm guessing he was one of those. But they tend to be pretty open about their existence, sometimes even advertise themselves as militiamen or whatever. Whereas the reindeer man seemed like he was living completely off the grid. I don't live in Oregon anymore. Me and my girlfriend during the encounter broke up at the end of college. But when we were still together, I happened to be driving down towards Eugene. I always avoided the stretch of highway that I saw the reindeer man on. I've told this story a lot over the years and some people honestly just think I'm making it up, like a campfire tale or something. But it's not a tale. It's not made up. And it's definitely not just intended to be some dumb, spoopy story. It's most definitely a warning to anybody traveling on that road at night. Because if my girlfriend wasn't with me when he ran out in front of the car, if she wasn't there to spot him before he crept up on me, only to scare him off with the blast of the horn. I honestly might not be here to warn you. So please, this holiday season, drive careful, drive slow, and do not stop, for any reason, on dark, deserted stretches of forest highway.
Back when I was 16, 17, and even up to 18, my father and I were very close. In fact, we would often, instead of getting hotels or anything like that, we would just camp out on the side of the road. Literally, my dad would pull over and we would just walk maybe 200 yards into the woods, pitch a tent, and there we go. We'd done this more times than I could possibly count, so this wasn't scary for any of us. We were pretty well versed in the outdoors, camping in many areas that were uncomfortable to many people, just kind of out there, many times along the highway because of the long road trips we used to make. We often didn't have time to find a hotel or want to. My dad and I were much more adventurous and found the thrill of hiking and sleeping in the woods much more exciting. However, we did have one bad experience. We were in Northern California, somewhere north of Sacramento to be exact, but not quite to the Oregon border yet. We had pulled over somewhere along the road, and we decided to camp out, probably about a hundred feet or so from the road. I remember that very distinctly, because this time we had camped much closer to the truck. I think it was because my dad wanted to make sure he could get his supplies easier, for whatever reason this time, and the highway was much more audible. So, everything was normal. We fell asleep that night, and as we were getting up the next morning dismantling the tent, my father, who had walked off a bit in the woods to go explore and go relieve himself in the morning, was running back to me, saying we gotta double time it and load the truck up. Somebody is coming after us. I just listened to my dad, because he's never fearful in the woods. So we loaded up the truck. I kept trying to look back, but did not see anything. We loaded up in probably about 10 minutes, which is record time for both of us. We got out of there and back on the road. My dad seemed very unnerved, very panicked, very unlike him in nature. He's always extremely relaxed, very knowledgeable, very secure in this environment. For him to act like this, something was clearly off. I began poking and prodding for answers, and after a few minutes, he opened up. He said he saw about an eight to nine foot tall man, what he described as covered in animal skins, or maybe it was like an upright walking deer. He wasn't too sure, but it looked like a man with large antlers or a headpiece. I remember being so confused, but he said this man's face was all wrong, distorted, and glowing white eyes. What was weird with his description is he said that this eight to nine foot tall man was so covered in these animal skins, it was hard to tell if he was really that hairy or just so well disguised in animal skins, and said it looks like he had a crude axe in his right hand that he was dragging against the ground. When I tried to ask more about the purpose of this man being out there, that maybe somehow we had encroached on his territory, my father dismissed that, and said judging by the look in his eyes and his face, he looked partially human, but something else. I never knew what my father meant. Now that I'm much older, and that experience is so far in the past, I almost wonder if he's speaking about a Wendigo, since I know so much about them now. Unfortunately, my father passed away only two years after I turned 18. It was right before my 21st birthday party, actually, and so I'll always wonder what he truly saw in the woods that day. Could it have been a Wendigo? Could it have been a Sasquatch? Or something else entirely? I stopped for gas in the little town in northern Canada. I could tell it was dinner time, and after dinner hours were fading into the evening hours. Just outside the gas station that I stopped, I witnessed a family who looked western get out of a small sedan and begin to unpack their wares, like blankets, jackets, and other things. What caught my eye, but is probably not all that relevant, was their children did not look well nourished, a kind of dysfunctional family. Turning the attention back to myself, I then began to pan out 
and look at the gas station clerk, who was talking to the father, and upon looking further in the distance, I noticed a strange gray humanoid figure watching them beyond the trees, with what appeared to have large gray claws and pitted eyes, like its eyes were just large black and empty, with small burning pitch inside. I had to rub my eyes to make sure I wasn't just seeing things, but when I opened my eyes again, this thing was gone. But one thing I did notice, a feeling remained lingering. A feeling you could almost grasp. Something that's physically tangible. Like something was here. Something different was in the area that was not there before, before I had ever noticed this figure. The dad was still talking to the clerk when he stopped conversation, walked away, and turned to look at me. His eyes were almost the same, black and dead looking. And in that moment, all of his children and his wife turned to look at me too, and their eyes all the same, black and dead looking. I got the creeps. To this day, I don't know if the humanoid figure that I saw in the trees had anything to do with this freak family. I don't know. But I didn't stay very long. Either did the family. The only possible correlation I could think of is that there are creatures called Wendigos, which are nasty spirits. Supposedly cannibalistic, but I'm not exactly sure what this has to do with seeing this family and this humanoid off in the trees. Maybe it's possible they had a part to play together, but I can't be too sure. And that's about the scariest thing that has ever happened to me. My brother is a nature photographer. He does it for a living. And so because of this, we usually end up going out to the wilderness area all over the country. But one time, we went up to the great grand wilderness of British Columbia, just for fun, not on a client mission. And one time, he went into a northwestern town near this one nature reserve. He said to me that he had a really creepy feeling when he visited the McBride Canyon Grocery. Well, we had been adventuring through various towns in the area and had decided to visit the McBride in the early spring of 1978. I can tell you it was a cloudy day when we got there, and the mountains of the reserve were visible from miles away. When you get off the highway, number 37 specifically, you drove into a very calm, very beautiful area. It was so special that you had to stop in towns along the highway just to get your groceries. It was an area that was meant to be passed through, but not really lived in. The town square of McBride had several nice motels, a good army surplus sales store, and the famous McBride grocery store in the center. The name of the store was in large neon yellow green letters, but were very dim which made them stand out in the weather. The store itself was a treasure trove of creaky floors and unkept 90 year old shelves that smelt like natural ice deposits and alder smoked meat. Besides that, the place had an inner sense of light and perception. Meanwhile, we got to the grocery store and this is when the mood becomes strange. At some point, my brother was pulled aside and warned of his career, because a North American Indian legend demon, a wendigo, was spotted on the outskirts of town just before the summer had started, and was most likely still lurking in the area. I guess a lot of people there have been talking about it, since it's been making itself known to all the residents. Fortunate enough for me, I stayed behind at the motel when this happened. I guess, long story short, my brother had ventured out, all by himself in the early morning hours, to a small hill just outside of town. He was trying to get some good shots of some deer that were coming to the small clearing where there's a large pond to drink. If you know anything about deers, they are nocturnal, 
and are very active during the dark. So he wanted to get there as soon as daylight appeared, just before light, so that they would still be drinking and not yet bedding down. But what he did not expect to see was the strange, monstrous creature, which he described to me was a wendigo in the flesh. He described it as having horns, covered in hair, and having almost like a skeletal-like frame. Remember, this was back in the late 70s. Nothing like that even existed, as far as anybody was concerned. Not even in horror movies. My brother was so genuinely terrified. He changed careers and stopped as a nature photographer for years afterwards. He was far too scared to go back out into the wild. And even afterwards, he had a very hard time talking about it. In fact, he wouldn't mention it. He refused to even acknowledge the term Wendigo. But back then, that's not really something you would talk a lot about. But there were times where I would try to bring it up to him, to get him to talk about it. But that was the hard part. And the only thing I've ever learned in all these years about Wendigos is what I've already told you, that they are murderous, native American spirits, thirsty for flesh and blood, and will hunt down anybody they can. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, because I very well might be wrong about that, but they can also take several forms from what I've heard of several local natives. Everything from these gaunt, disgusting skeletal figures to large, terrifying, hairy beasts, and everything in between. If there's anything you don't want to run into, and my brother was proof, is a Wendigo. I was out in the wilderness of California on a camping trip with my brother and a few mutual friends of ours. I can tell you the exact date and year it was, that's how much this terrifying event sticks out in my memory. It was October 22nd, 1980. My brother and I and our friends had pitched a huge tent for the night, and we were all sitting around the campfire, just talking about usual teenage stuff. I remember it was a very dark night, a cloudless sky. The moon was full, but the clouds had blocked out all the stars. There was no light from the moon, due to the thick clouds, so it was very dark. We had no choice but to keep the fire going. Suddenly, we heard a noise from the woods and see this large black shape moving through the forest. It slowly came to the light of the fire, and we see this very large hulking figure. It appeared to be black and white. It had black eyes, but they seemed to kind of glow. It had very huge, long arms and legs, large black claws. The head appeared to be smaller, but had a very sharp pointed nose, and it had long, tangled, brownish black hair. The hands and feet were also very large, like a human's, but with huge black claws. It stood at the edge of the campfire light, swaying back and forth as it watched us. We all sat there frozen as it watched us, making these strange noises. It was moaning, kind of in this deep growling voice. It was horrible. It sounded like cats dying. We all kept our eyes locked on it, not daring to make a move. It then emitted this terrible, horrible scream and began to move towards all of us. We jumped up, screaming and running for the tent. I reached it first. As I was going inside, I saw it better. It was now directly there, and I appeared to look into its eyes. Then it shone its teeth, and I was frozen. It opened its mouth, and I saw a massive row of long, pointed fangs, except every teeth were like that, and they were all in a very strange way. By staring into its eyes, I felt drawn to it, like my body was entranced. 
Then, I felt a hand on my shoulder and I turned and saw my brother. He pulled me away and stepped backwards. As I did so, it took another step forward. I saw that it was reaching out for me and breathing heavily. It made this horrible gurgling sound and I saw its chest rise and fall as it was breathing. I gazed back at its mouth and saw that blood was now emitting from its mouth all over and pouring down its chest. It began to back away and my brother kept pulling me back. I couldn't help still feel like I was in a trance and being drawn to this thing that I was trying to shake off. I just felt myself wanting to go near it like it was pulling me in. I felt in that moment the evil being broken over me and just like that from my brother pulling me back in the tent I came out of a trance. After that we all went running, abandoned everything, the tent, our equipment, everything, and just ran. We knew that as it ran, as we ran, it was watching us. We were all very incredibly frightened by this experience, and especially in 1980, you couldn't tell anybody about this without being called a loon. So for the longest time, my brother and I just kept it to ourselves unless we want to be called crazy by saying we saw some crazy monster in the woods. We wouldn't learn till much later that this creature we encountered was actually a Wendigo spirit that was probably looking to cannibalize us. I'm surprised I even managed to escape because I know, just looking back on it, that it put me in some sort of dark trance and was going to consume my soul had I let it get too close to me. That would have been the end of me. I know for a fact there would have been nothing left. Probably not even bone. Why this thing began gurgling and emitted blood, I'm not exactly sure. Or why it even gave up on trying to grab me. Who knows. But it was by far the most frightening experience you could ever imagine having out in the woods all by yourself. Especially growing up, and you're taught that the woods are a safe place. Monsters aren't supposed to exist. And yet here we are, 2021, and there are countless stories upon stories upon stories of people seeing all sorts of horrible things, just like I did, out in the woods, when they trusted their peers, their parents, their families, that life, the woods, and everything like that is safe. I'm telling you right now, that notion could not be farther from the truth. I've stayed out of the woods and have pretty much refrained from any camping since that day 40 plus years ago. No, I'm not losing out. I'm staying safe. Look, I don't know what this thing was, but I'm fairly certain I saw a skinwalker this night. It was about 9 p.m., and I was driving past a small ranch here in the Arizona desert. As I was driving past, I saw something that resembled a small child standing on the side of the road. I slowed down and pulled off to the other side. I saw the thing turn and look at me. It wasn't a child at all, nor was it remotely human. In fact, it was the most evil, terrifying creature I have ever seen. If this was a Bigfoot, it would look similar, but this looked more strange. It was covered in hair, probably seven feet tall, and was standing on two thick legs, huge muscular arms and body. It had a very distorted, deformed face, but also very grotesque looking. It had dark brown hair all over its body, but it was kind of coyote-like, if that makes any sense. But it was walking very strange, hunched and moving slowly. It had very big hands and very large feet. I was not really sure what to make of this strange creature, since it was moving and walking so weird. But as soon as it noticed me, 
it quickly began moving itself towards my car. That's when I quickly threw my car in a drive and sped off. I have no idea what this thing was, or why it was showing sudden interest in me and my vehicle, but I was not going to risk sticking around and finding out. I should make note that at about 9pm this time, it was in the pit of summer, so it wasn't entirely pitch black just yet. And there was still enough light that I was able to see this strange anomaly of a creature, and strange it was. I have never in my life seen anything remotely like that, ever. It was very perplexing, to say the least. So my encounter doubles as a skinwalker and UFO story, because as soon as the sighting happened, I believe that all these beings began popping up around our property. It never stopped. The only thing that caused it to cease was me moving. Anyway, right around 20 years ago, at the age of 19, I was living in the desert on a small patch of dirt with my family. It was my first year living there, since after a very toxic living situation, I moved back in with my parents, and I was helping them build upon their home and on their property. One evening, Around 8 p.m., I was outside on the front porch of the old trailer that my parents were currently living in. I was just sitting on one of the milk crates that I used to transport my small dog. I was peeling the label off a beer bottle at the time that I just opened, having a very quiet moment, enjoying the evening. I was facing east, looking out over the desert. It was a very clear evening. You could see for miles. To my left, I see this bright light approaching from the north. I assumed maybe it was a low-flying satellite, so I didn't pay much attention. But it began to get closer, and I realized it was coming way too fast to ever be a satellite. I thought that maybe it was a helicopter at first, but realized that it was too low to be a helicopter. I watched it as it approached and realized it was also coming in very fast. The light began to dim and I could start to make out what it was. It was this small oval shaped object that was white with a very reddish hue. It looked to be the size of a van. As it got even closer, I could see that it was completely silent and was roughly approaching 30 to 40 miles an hour. It began to slow down, and as it got closer, I could see that it was about 50 to 75 feet above the ground. That's when I could start to make out the shape. It had two bright white lights on each side of it, making it to be the size of stop signs. The lights were so bright that I could see the ground below it lighting up as it passed over. As the object flew over the trailer, I could clearly see the bottom of it and it was not shaped like a typical aircraft. It was disc shaped and had a very flat bottom to it. I could see that the object was also completely silent and was flying by some power that it must have had. As it passed over the desert behind the trailer, it slowed down even more as it then approached. It came to a complete stop mid-air. The lights on it were still on, but it was totally silent. I had no idea what this thing was. It was just sitting there, and I could see the shape of it perfectly, even though it was nighttime. It appeared to be about 50 feet long, and it was white. As I was sitting there, it began moving again. It seemed to fly back over the trailer and out of sight, but I could still feel it in the area. The air and atmosphere around me changed. It became very staticky. I was in total shock. I had no idea what this thing was or what it was doing there, nor had I ever seen anything like it before. I have never seen anything like it since then either. But afterwards, the following few nights later, which by the way I never told my parents about it at the time, they wouldn't have believed me. These weird beings began popping up all around our property. 
the only way I can describe them, they were these black, tall, coyote-like figures that would stay around the outside of the house. They would always be stalking and watching. Every time I saw them, they would be sure to keep their distance, but I always got a really bad feeling about them, like they were there to do harm, or that they were evil. It's like when you're around somebody in public, and you just get a really bad feeling, like that person's not a good person. It was kind of like that. You know, they say you're supposed to always trust your gut instinct. That's exactly what kicked in every time I saw these things. Pitch black, coyote-like, and upright. Very strange, but also terrifying. They never came and did anything to the house, but they were very curious, and there were at least five or six of them that would appear, and they would only ever come in the late evenings, nights, and early mornings, never during the day when the full sun was out. My parents again somehow never saw them. It's like they were drawn to me, or something. Maybe that UFO that flew over somehow marked me. I don't know. I know that's starting to sound like a crazy conspiracy theory, but this is an experience that I think about literally every day, and I've been dying to get some answers. Is it possible that I saw a UFO and somehow the energy of this thing appearing brought on the presence of these skinwalker beings? Or are these upright, black, walking coyote things something else entirely? I'm not sure, but I would love some answers. Thank you so much for your show and all that you do. I feel silly for even typing this out, but I've told a few friends and they told me I should reach out to you. They also explained to me that it's very possible what I dealt with could very well be a skinwalker. Alright, so a few years ago, I happened to live in a really, really old house, probably built in the late 1800s, or even early 1900s. I'm not sure of the exact year though. I lived there for about a year and a half, and I lived alone. And being a single female, I did not like the idea of living in a house by myself. Even though the house was in the middle of nowhere, it was still pretty creepy. Oh, and another reason why everybody thinks it's a skinwalker. This was just barely outside of the Navajo Reservation in New Mexico. The first thing I noticed when I first moved in was I would wake up in the early morning hours and hearing voices just outside the house. This is right where the bedrooms were, and I would wake up to the sound of what sounded like people talking, but it wasn't a language I understood. And being the stubborn person I am, I would just say to myself that there was nothing there, especially after looking outside the windows and not seeing anybody where the sounds were visibly coming from. I would then go back to sleep. It would usually take about 15 minutes or more for the voices to cease. I thought it was the wind, but I never heard the wind blow their voices or speaking. I also heard other voices coming from other areas outside the house. It was very strange. I've never heard the Navajo language before, but it did not sound English. It sounded kind of strange. I would also hear voices coming from inside the house. One time, even down in the basement. I could never figure out where exactly the voices were coming from. It was always just people having conversation, or somebody talking. Never anything more dangerous than that, I suppose. But being a female, this unnerved me. A lot. Then, there was one time I was outside talking to a friend of mine who had come to visit, and we both saw this black figure that was a person out by the back gate, roughly 75 yards away. They had on dark clothing, or what my friend mentioned appeared to be animal skins, and they were walking away. I called out to the person, but they never turned around, and there's nobody around here for miles and miles. So, this really freaked me out. They quickly disappeared before we could catch up to them. Imagine that. 
and because of how desolate the area is, I have no idea where they could have gone off to. The next day, I was inside my house doing some laundry, and I noticed that the clothes in the dryer were kind of shaking. Shaking because the whole room was shaking, and I began hearing this loud chanting outside my house. It was all around, and it sounded like a massive native chant going on. But the voice and the pitches of the voice were off, like it sounded incredibly demonic. I thought I was having a mental breakdown or a stroke or some sort of mass hallucination. And then, just as soon as it began, everything stopped and everything went quiet. I ran outside, looking around for any source of what had just happened. Nothing. There was nobody around anywhere. No footprints. Nothing. This kind of stuff kept happening. Although while I never saw an actual person or figure, other than that one day by the gate, these kinds of voices kept appearing over and over and over. It pushed me to the point where I was so freaked out, I was afraid to leave my house, and was convinced I had spirits all around. So, have it be skinwalker or spirits or whatever, I was determined to find somewhere to live. But due to my finances, and of course police not helping at all, I was stuck there for a little while longer, until finally I was successful in being able to roommate with another close friend of mine, and leave that place in the dust. I don't know who lives in it now, but the guy I rented it from, I guess, had quite a hard time getting people to move into it. Or so he told me when I signed the lease originally. Gee, I should have took that as a red flag initially. What was I thinking? So what do you think? Were these just evil spirits? Or was this an actual skinwalker that I was dealing with? I was backpacking by myself, just a few years back, actually, long before the pandemic and all the shutdown. Funny, it seems like all these things were so long ago, but yet daily, we're very much so reminded that life, or what we would call normal life, wasn't that far away. Before I get a little too far into the story, I'm a huge fan of urban exploration, and not just that, also exploring out into the woods by myself, finding anything that is remotely interesting. I found things from old, battered and beaten, model T frames, old rusted gun shells, weapons, arrowheads, and even strange makeshift weapons that appear to be far older than I, even though I'm only 20, and I was about 17 at the time of this strange finding. On this particular day, a beautiful warm spring day in May, I decided it would be well spent outside in the woods rather than at my house. So I packed up some water bottles, a few cliff bars, and I set out on a four to five hour journey as far as I could. There were many woods around my area. I wouldn't exactly say unexplored, it was more like just undeveloped land that stretched on for miles. Could I say it was a part of a natural forest? I'm not too sure. I don't think so. I do know, though, that by my house and some parts of the woods are homeless camps and aren't exactly safe to venture off into. So I made my way into the opposite section of woods, which is opposite of the homeless camp. There, I don't think there are any camps like that. I try to make sure I can keep my distance, if anything. I set out into the beautiful woods, and let me remind you, it was a very clear day. Nothing weird, strange, or dark, or out of the ordinary was present at any given moment. And after making it maybe two miles off into the backwoods, although I would hardly call it backwoods, because, as I stated before, this is all just a huge area of undeveloped land. If I were to go out a few miles in any direction, I would probably hit a couple of neighborhoods. Although, this section of woods I had not yet really explored. So, to me, 
it was backwoods. And to my 17-year-old brain, I felt like I was out deep in the wilderness, untouched by mankind. At some point, I came to a small creek, and I followed that creek for a short amount of time. No more than 20 minutes, if I'd have to estimate. Then the disturbing part came. I started finding decapitated squirrels just lying around on the ground. Not randomly, like somebody had got them, chopped their heads off, and threw them on the ground. I followed them. There was maybe three or four of them when I reached this old, I don't want to say abandoned cabin, but it was an old makeshift shed slash cabin. Somebody was clearly living here at some point, but it looked abandoned. I can tell you one thing confidently. I got the creeps. This little makeshift cabin shed thingy was kind of in a small clearing, maybe no more than 50 feet. A good spot for it too, since the small creek was no more than 30 feet away. And I could see that there used to be a small fire pit, or a place where fire was at between the shed and the creek. Definitely, somebody had been living or camping out here. There was other forms of clothes in miscellaneous trash, so I didn't think too much of it. I figured maybe this was just a small little drug den, or something along those lines. But the decapitated squirrels? Now that, I can't exactly find an answer for. Along with those creepy feelings, I couldn't help shake the feeling that somebody around the area was still there. Like I wasn't alone. There was somebody else besides me. Upon looking around and checking my surroundings very thoroughly, I didn't see anybody else, nor did I hear any signs of anybody else being present at the time. I opened up the shed door and it was pretty small, maybe the size of a bedroom at most. There was really nothing in there but an old ratty blanket on the ground and some other miscellaneous trash. No needles or anything like that, just old and dirty, run down. It looked like somebody threw this thing together with old pieces of sheet metal, pieces of wood, anything they could find. It was very primitive. But after I opened the door and stepped in to kind of just check things out, that's when my senses truly heightened. I started hearing noises outside, like somebody was approaching. So I quickly jumped out and scanned around. Nothing. I didn't see a soul around which really made me start questioning, am I going crazy, or am I just way too overly paranoid? But I could tell, if I were to follow this small little trail further, it goes off beyond the shed, off into another small section of woods that goes beyond. I don't know what it was, to be honest with you. There was just some sort of really bad feeling in the pit of my stomach that was screaming at me, do not go further whatever you do. I didn't see any more decapitated squirrels that led in that direction, so I was pretty much deciding whether or not to go back or to go forward. I thought maybe I would just sit down for a minute, collect my thoughts, and maybe explore this area a little more. After all, besides this little makeshift shed and the dead squirrels, those were the only things that were disturbing. Perhaps some old, drugged-out lunatic was living here. In the middle of processing these thoughts, with the sound of the creek running behind me, I hear a man screaming at the top of his lungs, followed by a dog whimpering and screaming in pain. Now, I can't replicate it, but if you've ever heard a dog scream in pain, imagine what it would be like putting a dog in a bear trap. The same kind of scream squeal an animal would make, knowing fear and pain. And it was coming from close by in the same direction where the trail led off to. That was enough for me. I noped it out of there so quickly. I grabbed my stuff, got out of there, and I started running. Running back down where the creek met and down the trail which I kind of took myself. As I made it back towards the entrance where the base of the creek where I originally started following the creek, I began hearing more noises behind me and it sounded like multiple men yelling and shouting although about what, I couldn't tell. 
I couldn't make out what they were saying, just their tone and inflection. They didn't sound happy, and it sounded, had I stuck around for much longer, I would have been in grave danger. I mean, there's no knowing what those men would or could have done. And after that day, I never really went back into that section of woods. I know there are occasionally homeless people that wander around, but I still to this day can't describe the dogs screaming in pain, or the decapitated squirrels and what that was all about. They were fresh too. It appeared like somebody had a knife or something and did it. The heads weren't just ripped off, and the bodies weren't eaten. Somebody, probably someone out of their mind or drugged out, did this. And I'll tell you what, I had no desire to go back there and meet the person responsible. The only real thing I regret is not calling the police for them to investigate further. In hindsight, I probably should have. It's okay if you don't believe me, because I stand by what I saw. One day, when I was driving out in the country, it was in a more thicker wooded area on a small country two-lane road. There was no other real traffic on the road at the time, which means that, of course, like usual, I was by myself. I had no co-pilot, no friends to keep me company. It was just me. It was also dusky, and not too dark. It was actually the brighter side of dusk, when the sun is just beginning to set, and everything is still very much bright outside. I've only told two friends about this. They both claim it was possibly a misidentification of a bear, but a bear doesn't have these traits and qualities. I've seen enough brown and black bear in my entire life to know that this is not a misidentification, and if I'm honest with you, I wouldn't be wasting your time if I even had the slightest suspect that this could have been a bear, and not something else that's strange. At first, it was the movement that caught my eye. Off on my driver's side, inside the woods, in the sparse amounts of trees, just beyond the initial tree line, was this large dark figure moving. At first, I did initially think it was a bear, just because of how it waddled on two legs, like it was shaky and having a rather rough time walking. But after maybe three or four steps, it quickly gained composure and began walking very comfortably, like a normal upright walking man would. Immediately, I kind of had a double take to make sure I was seeing what I was seeing. Because of where it was, and the lighting, and how many trees it was tucked back between, I didn't get the best look at it. But enough that I could see it was something what I would say is out of the ordinary. As it was moving, I could tell it had a very strange gait to it. Even though it was very smooth in its movements, it still just wasn't right. There was something about it that just, I don't know. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I knew it wasn't a man and I just knew it wasn't a bear. You see, when bears walk on two legs, they're kind of clumsy. They don't move as smooth or glide like this figure did. I couldn't give you an estimate on how big or small this figure was. Definitely as tall as a man, but to go as far as saying 9 or 10 feet tall, I don't know. From my ankle, and from where I was, and the distance that I was from it, it appeared to be just this large dark silhouette. I've read theories and speculations online that this could have been a Bigfoot, but the proportions did not add up to what people speculate are Bigfoot, like having a large cone-shaped head, very broad shoulders. This was more like a man, just a standard man-sized silhouette, just a little larger and going very smoothly. It wasn't completely black though. I could see it had some definition and some shape, possibly some hair. I just don't know what it was, but to say it was a bear it's impossible. After about 15 seconds, this thing quickly disappeared behind one of the passing oak trees, and I did not see it again after that. As far as where it went, I'm not exactly sure. 
since it disappeared so quickly. But I even stopped my car, turned around to see if I could see it again. I could not. I scanned and looked around and saw nothing. It must have been gone. So I turned around again and went back the original direction that I was headed in. I wondered the entire rest of the night what it is that I saw, and the following day told my couple of friends what it was and gave them exact depictions and descriptions of what it is that I believe it could have been. They were quick to dismiss any claims of it possibly being anything more than a bear. But like I told you, I don't think it was. I don't think it was something explainable, unless it could have been some sort of gorilla, but even monkeys and gorillas don't have that smooth of a gliding gait. Not like that. And it didn't remind me of a gorilla. It was very strange. I don't know. Again, I'll say it again. Believe me if you want to, but I stand by what I saw. We and my friends went camping in Michigan's Upper Peninsula just a few months ago, along with two coworker friends of mine for a bachelor party. It wasn't just any bachelor party, but a party of us hardcore video gamers. We spent the weekend drinking, fishing, and of course some target shooting. Friday night, after our fun trip, we had gotten to say 10% of the way drunk. We returned to the lodge, the cabins we were staying in. We grabbed some drinks and snacks and proceeded to play some board games. We had three easily navigatable cabins. Cabin 1 is where the bachelor party was being hosted. Cabin 2, us three co-workers. And Cabin 4, the four bachelor party guests and we decided to do some target shooting. A pastime of ours, usually reserved for the range. We went outside to our shooting ground, where we set up five targets in four foot increments. We decided to move the targets from farther away to closer to the targets in distance to each other. I took the rifle that shoots less than 100 yards and shot at the fifth target. And right after I took a shot, I realized that something had moved behind the fifth target all the way to my left. There was a set of trees in a straight line with the other trees that were closer. There was something that appeared to be standing right next to it, and it looked to be standing on two legs, long and lanky. It appeared to have the upper portion like a dog, maybe a husky or malamute, but the head resembled very much like a wolf or a dog. I didn't know what to do. I took another shot at the target, and I shot two more rounds, maybe wanting to see if this large dog was gone or not. As I shot my fourth round at the fifth target, the wolf-dog thing moved to a closer set of trees and appeared to crouch down just behind the tree. It was now up on its heels and slightly crouched over. I could see it had very hairy white shoulders. I decided then to shoot at it. As I took the shot, the animal sprinted about 30 feet off and disappeared. We all heard the noise and immediately saw movement behind the fifth target in the other line of trees. We ran immediately and were all looking in the general direction of where it scurried off to. It was stuck in my head that the closer set of trees, that's where the others claimed they saw it go behind. I looked back where we originally saw the thing and there appeared to be some kind of weird substance on the tree. It was like a black ooze, but I don't even know. The tree even appeared to be scratched, like this thing had been clawing at it before. We packed up our stuff and left, purely out of fear. It was only about 12.30 a.m. We were not thinking clearly, especially not with the bachelor party, guest huddling up and making remarks about eye shine. My two coworker friends tried to convince me that I was just seeing things, and that I see things all the time, and don't claim to see something every camping trip. When we all got back inside, we recounted everything to their words, and had a hard time believing there was something out there. We even talked to the owners of the lodge, old goat cabins, 
they basically brushed it off as black bears. But bear sightings are very common in the Upper Peninsula, and black bears are every bit as big as wolf dogs in my eyes. I don't know. It was very strange. The whole thing. Also, sorry if this story is kind of a jumbled mess. I'm writing on it from my phone, so I'm not actually double checking. Hopefully it reads good. Thank you. Me and my dog were just out in the Sierra Nevadas for a quick hike. As we were walking, my dog began to bark. As I looked to see where and what he was barking at, if there was really anything in particular, I didn't see anything. I noticed no bears, no strange animals, no weird sounds, nothing. After my dog was quiet, I called my dog to me, and where we were walking, we were actually heading back to a good friend's house, when all of a sudden, this dark looking figure appeared just off in the distance, maybe no more than 80 feet away from me and my dog. My dog immediately reacted negatively, growling, hair standing up on the back of his neck, and I could not get him to come to me or to even get close to him. He was going rabid, baring his teeth drooling, acting crazy. He's never acted like this before in his life. Something was wrong, and at this distance, I couldn't tell exactly who or what this figure was. And in that moment, I noticed there were several deer running from this thing in the direction that it was at, coming towards us. The deer seemed incredibly frightened like whatever this person was or thing was was pouncing on them or at least trying to and these deer were fleeing for their life while my dog is still barking going crazy locking his attention on this thing that's when the shape suddenly begins to bolt toward us and i could see that it was much larger huge head and looked very much like a large dog but upright it had dog-like legs and a very wolf-like head and body. Not a werewolf. I feel like going that far sounds pretty ridiculous, but it looked more just like some large upright wolf. I jumped, trying to pull on my dog, and as this thing got closer, it bolted off, disappearing behind the tree line, right where my dog was at. The feelings... I cannot describe to you how terrified me and my dog were. At this point, my dog was losing it, going completely haywire. I just picked up my dog and dragged him to where we were going, which was my friend's house. I'm trying to pull on my dog and I could hear this thing running through the trees as if trying to keep up with us and not lose us. I got down far enough to where this thing stopped following us but I could see it moving, this large upright canine entity, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth again. This thing was pitch black, but was gray when it charged us in the clearing. It was definitely stalking us, whatever it was, and was far more intelligent than just some simpleton animal. This thing was keeping up with us, and ensuring we were not leaving at least until it would allow it. Something I noticed was the stink. It smelled like smoke or hair burning, and kind of like rotting meat. It was a very strange odor, and I only started smelling it near the end of the encounter. I also didn't notice a direction that it was coming from, but more so all around, with this thing still around. Eventually, my dog and me got away, but... I'll never know exactly what that thing was, or what it wanted. I've heard of legends and things like that, or creatures like these large wolves. People have thrown around the term direwolf, but I don't think that's exactly what this was. And I'm not going to go with werewolf, since the idea of that is ridiculous, and I don't believe it was a large werewolf. But could it have been a large wild wolf that maybe had learned to adapt and walk on two legs? It's very possible.
perhaps that there are a species of upright walking canine living up here in the Sierra Nevadas that have adapted, evolved, and learned to hunt and are far more intelligent than any other species of wolf there are. Now that is very possible. I was camping with some friends and family out in the foothills of Ohio when one night, it was probably maybe midnight, we were all sitting around a campfire, talking, laughing, when my brother, who was with us, sees this large, huge figure walking around just beyond the light of the fire. He starts getting scared, and so we immediately start giving him so much crap, because, you know, the typical getting scared around a campfire, and we believe he's just trying to make up stuff to try and spook the rest of us, but he keeps telling us, guys, I'm serious, look, we all look, but we don't see anything, so we all just kind of yell at him, tell him to shut up and not see anything unless he has something important to add. He's like, you know what guys, I'm gonna go inside the tent, you can deal with this. So he goes and zips himself up, locks himself off inside the tent. We continue telling stories, laughing, having conversation. Not too much later, my cousin points, hey, do you see that? We all turn and see this large dark figure that appears to be covered in hair and is extremely large, kind of waddling, if not staggering towards us. Now we all have our attention towards this person, or what we thought was a person, and we're all like, what on earth? Why would this person or thing be out here? When we see that it turned its entire body toward us, and that's when the horror really kicked in. We all immediately knew this was no person. We could see these yellow glowing eyes and this large dog-like head that reminded us of a German Shepherd. It was walking towards us very slowly. We couldn't believe what we were seeing. My friend got out his weapon and I stood up, waiting for this thing to get to us. I didn't have any weapons on me, but my plan was to scoop up some coal from the fire and chuck it at it. Now, how I was realistically going to achieve this is a whole other story. That's when this thing stopped, now no more than 30 to 40 feet away, off in the darkness, but we could see it, at least the silhouette in its glowing eyes, and it emitted this very low growl. It was just like a lion growling. We were all scared crapless and retreated back to the tent, where we all once again flipped out on my poor brother saying, why didn't you warn us? Why didn't you tell us something like that was out there? There was arguing and bickering back and forth with him claiming that he did, saying that we should have listened. We could hear this thing walking around closer to our tent and campsite, but it sounded like at points it would just stop. Maybe an hour went by, I don't know, but my friend walked outside the tent, saw the coast was clear, and basically said, guys, if we want to make it out of here, we should dismantle camp and just make a run for it. We all agreed. There was no arguments there. We jumped out, took down the tent, put out the fire, grabbed our flashlights, and we booked it. It wasn't until later on, after telling this story to a few close family members, that they would mention the idea of a creature called the Dogman. At first, I thought it was kind of like that of a werewolf, but I guess Dogmen are different. They generally live all over the West, Midwest, and are canid like upright beings. They can be seen having yellow glowing eyes, or red, but most commonly amber, and can come in colors like gray, brown, or even black. Their body styles range, but the one I saw was very, very muscular. So I guess we have no other choice to conclude that we all had a dogman encounter that evening. At least, that's what I believe. So I thought I would write this story into you, so you could tell me what you think, and if this really was a dogman, or something else entirely.